Are you with us? I am with you. Oh, so you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Crystal yes, clear. Uh, the, the contact with Jesse disappeared. So go on with all the proceedings uh, if, I, if I don't get in. So, uh, never mind. So, what we are going to do, we are going to proceed and uh, if there are some breaks, the expert will make attempts to put you back online. Well, now I am back here, so, so it's okay. Okay, colleagues, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Umar Badampade. I'm the Dean, School of Engineering. This is the school that is uh, housing this program where our PhD candidate, Mr. Hirali Wakamwesiga, is going to be defending his uh, doctoral thesis entitled Vulnerability of Concrete Bridges to Environmental Conditions in Uganda. Uh, with the study condition states, potential risks, and management strategies for highway bridges. The opponent that is going to be engaging our candidate is Professor Leonard Elfgren. Leonard is a professor in Lulio University in the northern part of Sweden. The supervisors for Mr. Ivan Bakamwesiga were Professor Jackson Mwakari from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Makere University. And uh, he has experience, of course, in bridges and structures. And the second supervisor is Professor Sven Tal Anderson. And this is a professor in structural engineering in Lund University, uh, also in Sweden. Uh, the major research areas for Sven are structural reliability, structural fire safety, and timber engineering. So these are the two supervisors for the candidate. And as the policy requires, we normally are supposed to have either three or five examiners or panelists. At this time, we have three panelists who are going to engage and examine the PhD thesis for Hillary. The first is the Associate Professor John Baptist Chiravira, who is the, the head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering in the School of Engineering, said that. So, Professor, you're welcome. The second is uh, Dr. Moses Matovu, who is uh, a lecturer in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, School of Eng Engineering, said that. Doctor, you're welcome. Okay. The third is the uh, Associate Professor Stephen Muchivi, who is the Head of Architecture and uh, Land Management, no, Physical Planning, the School of Built Environment, said that. So, Professor, you're welcome. Those are the three uh, examiners that we are having. So, Hillary, we are going to give you 45 minutes maximum where you will be defending your work. I must apologize to the public. The size of the projection might not, might not be nice for some of you, but you will bear with us. We thought we would have a bigger projection where everybody could see the text. But here I will explain uh, based on what we are having. In a special way, I would like to welcome members of the public. You can see the principal uh, say that here. Professor, you're welcome. The rest of the members, professors, and some students, you're all welcome to this public defense. So, here I you can come and we start your defense. Thank you very much. So, Leonard and Sven, uh, here is going to start his uh, presentation. Thank you.
My study was about vulnerability of concrete bridges, environmental conditions in Uganda. This was a study of condition states, bridges, potential risks, and management strategies of highway bridges. This was funded by the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency and Mackay Basta. The outline of the presentation is introduction, the problem, the search questions, study area, methodology, the publications, the general conclusions, those will be followed by recommendations and suggested further research, then key contributions and acknowledgements. Introduction. Road infrastructure needs to be in good condition to sustain livelihoods and the country's economies. In Uganda, road infrastructure alone accounts for over 90% passenger and traffic and freight traffic. Bridges are crucial links and uh, they should be maintained to remain safe and functional. Most of our bridges in Uganda were built in 1950s, 1960s, and they were designed for less traffic and lighter loads than we have today. There is a poor maintenance culture in Uganda. For example, according to a report by the auditor Office of Auditor General 2020 only 27% of national roads are being maintained. The aging and irregular maintenance makes bridges vulnerable to severe weather events such as heavy rainfall, floods, and storms. The increase in traffic volumes due to increase in human population the unexpected erratic climate conditions call for the design and construction of durable concrete bridges. Considering the limited resources which are usually allocated to bridge maintenance and, uh, of course, transport as a whole, there is a need for reliable information on bridge condition, prioritization of maintenance, so as to minimize the life cycle costs and environmental impacts on bridge structures. The problem. There has been an increase in the frequency of road failures and bridge failures, largely attributed to extreme climatic conditions, such as floods, and the consequences such as soil erosion and landslides, there is poor and irregular maintenance, that's another factor, overload and age. Of course, there are many other factors, such as fatigue, which account for less damages. The consequences of bridge failures, loss of human and final resources, and dented national image, are the consequences which usually happen when bridges fail. There is absence of one-stop center where historical, technical, and inspection monitoring data can be found. There is absence of a formal computerized bridge management system which makes strategic planning problematic. These are examples of problems now bridges, for example, you can say truck in 2013 was washed away. This is a, the well-known Nyamamba flood.
Um, the next, uh, that uh, photograph shows also Mugoko Bridge, which was almost washed away. You can see Sea Bridge in, or the Kanjuchi Bridge in Kilembe, which was washed away. But fortunately, it has been replaced, but it was after some time. These uh, are examples are just uh, which I got from uh, YouTube, which we show you how the the gravity of is uh, is a video, video clips, uh, but uh, okay. Anyway. This was just a bridge which was washed away, and that gentleman on the motorcycle just fell into a flood, and of course, must have died. Poor oh, maintenance. During my study, I moved around these bridges. This was around 2011 and 2012. <coughs> the first In the first picture, uh, there is clear abrasion, built fast moving water, that is Karuma Bridge. The second one is a very big crack, and that is along Mpanga Bridge. Mpanga, we call it Mpanga 2, which is located in town, because there is also Mpanga 1, called Ahakaba. There is a, a erosive force of fast moving water which affects bridge foundation, Mbuko Bridge. You can see vegetation blocks the road, uh, drainage uh, along the road, along the bridge. <coughs> and this when it delays water infiltration, if there is happens to be a crack, that can cause some corrosion of the reinforcing steel. Rust. This was identified in very few bridges, and that one was a double arch bridge, the Chibiba Bridge. Um, there is a rust repair again, the same bridge, which was just um, on top of, of the, the, the deck. Poor uh, maintenance and edge. In my write-up, I call this Marawa Bridge. But actually, when I went back in 2012, they called it Naiga Bridge. And they, that was 2011, you can see the stone pitching had, had, uh, had reduced because of fast moving water. This was during the dry season. You can see uh, there is a heap of silt under the bridge and the longitudinal cracks on the deck. And this was just a photograph to show you how this bridge was still under use, even in that condition. But no wonder, in 2015, it was a uh, declared functional absolute and it was repressed. It's a, this is the process of repressing. Overload. Uh, we have had incidences in, in Tungwe, uh, on Tungwe Bridge and the uh, Mitano, uh, Omonengo Bridge on River Mitano, which are both in Kunjiri. And the, there is an example of the axle road control system. This is an impounded truck which on uh, 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 around in, in Ruero, uh, which I visited Ruero uh, Waybridge Station. And I took that photograph. Research questions. One, that is, what is the current status of bridge management in Uganda? 
and how can it be improved? What's the condition state of highway bridges? What factors are responsible for deterioration and eventual failure of bridges? What are potential risks of extreme environmental conditions to highway concrete bridges? And what strategies can be put in place to enhance the management and increase the service life of highway bridges? The study, the study area was five highway bridges. These highway bridges were radiating from Kampala to rural regions. You can see the map. Uh, Masaka Road, Masaka Highway, up to Kavari. There is uh, Mubende, Fort Poto. There is uh, um, Kampala, Guru, there is Hoima Road, and there is also Jinja, Jinja Road up to Malaba. The study sites were 22 highway bridges, all of them managed by UNRWA. 68% of those study sites were still concrete bridges, and 32% were reinforced bridges, are reinforced concrete bridges. Why did we select these highways? One is that uh, this highway is link in the commercial town, which is Kampala City. It's a very prominent commercial town and administrative capital to rural regions. The, and therefore, it is economically important. And also, we wanted regional representativeness to be considered. The methodology. Research took the form of both case studies and experiments. It employed social and scientific techniques, such as quantitative approaches. This included visual inspection, non-destructive techniques, semi-destructive techniques, field and reporter measurements. We had first-face -face interviews. Qualitative approaches included unstructured interviews, desk studies, and review of relevant literature, literature stakeholder inter identification and analysis. We also considered uh, ethics and definitely analyzed our data. Publications. The first one is assessment of the need to improve bridge management in Uganda, an interdisciplinary approach. This was um, published this year by the International Journal of Forensic Engineering. The objectives of and methodology. We aimed at shedding light on bridge practices, bridge management practices, recent developments, and what future management entails. We also aimed at highlighting the potential strengths weaknesses and opportunities of roads administration agencies. And the methodology we use, documental reviews, <coughs> field lists, interviews, and observations. The contents of the paper include an overview of bridge management system. We had an overview of several systems all over the world including, for example, the Pontis, which is used and Bridget, which, is, which are used in America. We um, also looked into other systems like Batman, which is used in Sweden. Then we came to Africa. We found that actually most of the bridge management system literature is from South Africa. And that's where bridge management is prominent. And uh, 
Then Tanzania, the Tan Bridge, which is their bridge management system, which is used by Tan Roads. The aim of uh, having an overview of bridge management system was to make the readers appreciate the importance of the importance and the functionality of bridge management systems and also the development how can we develop them the major causes of bridge failure in Uganda we had went to uh, UNRWA, went to Minsk of Works we found out that actually major causes of bridge failures include uh, floods, climatic conditions, we include uh, overload, and uh, age was another factor, and of course, irregular maintenance of bridges. We looked at uh, the approaches to bridge maintenance. We found out that uh, actually UNRWA uses reactionary means rather than pre precautionary approaches. Yes, reactionary approach is usually is used all over the world, but we, we found that it is better if they use precautionary approaches so that they can be prepared for actions. Because the reactionary approach becomes expensive in, in, do, in both strategy and tactics and even operational uh, processes. Procedure for addressing emergencies of bridge failures. We found out that there is a very long procedure when a bridge fails today, it can take quite a long time because one it has to be the information has to be delivered by the concerned people, the onlookers, or somebody who has got an interest or the affected person to uh, the officers at the maintenance stations, then the maintenance officer has to rush to the site to do some emergency analysis of what is happening, but the officer does not have the capacity to do anything apart from now relaying information to UNRWA, then UNRWA has to send technical experts to the site. These technical experts now will do uh, technical investigations verify reports and then emergence with emergence interventions will be taken to the site and the, then the process of rehabilitation of um, replacement will take place thereafter which is a very long process procedure for addressing emergencies yes overload and control we visited way bridge stations. We um, read a lot of literature on regulations, and we found that there are some weaknesses which we shall highlight in the short analysis, which we for, which is following. This is an example of a bridge which was not part of my study sites which is Muzizi Bridge, which I had been monitoring even way before I even started this work. You can see it had been flooded for some, uh, several times before 2011. And this was a photograph taken in 2011. This one, you can see the clear height from the uh, surface of the water to the bottom of the lake is very small. But the emergency intervention which has been taken in terms of organizational cost, it's very expensive. This is a very bridge which is temporary. And fortunately, at least it took about two years to construct, and that was very short today. And it's already done. So the analysis of UNRWA. The strengths 
The internal strength of the organization is that we have 22 station maintenance stations spread all over the country. There are quite committed uh, staff. The recruitment of an environmental specialist this was a very good uh, step because a lot of environmental reports they come to Inula and he's the one actually to synthesize those reports. Preventive, routine, and periodic maintenance programs are usually done by INRA, but the weaknesses include the inadequate supply of equipment, absence of strategic plan for bridge maintenance. By that time, they did not have strategic plan for bridge maintenance. The bureaucracy, the long gestation period, say from the conception commissioning of infrastructure projects was quite very long and this has been a very big problem. The recent one is, a, for example, the Tirini Road, where it has taken long to, to construct, um, to, 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 to rehabilitate the road. Insufficient technical capacity to manage bridges. This was uh, seen when we visited these way bridges. Insufficient historical and technical information. At UNRWA, historical information, if you want it, they refer it to means of works. Means of works will say, ah, we gave them to UNRWA. So you don't have technical information, which is very, very useful in as far as especially of, of bridges, which is very, very useful if you want to do some, for example, strength analysis. The opportunities, external opportunities, include the willingness to provide environmental data by these uh, organizations like uh, the Uganda Meteorological uh, Authority, assistance of favorable, existence of favorable policy and legislation, lots of laws, lots of policies have been developed, Supportive government, government of Uganda has supported all over. For example, there has been an increase in the uh, finances to uh, uh, Minister of Water, Minister of Works and Transport. For over the last six years, it has been really astronomical. Uganda's growing national economy is also another opportunity to UNRWA. Vulnerability of of concrete bridges to extreme weather events is a real threat. The first increase in human population, because as they increase, it means uh, the, the number of vehicles, the number of heavy vehicles will also increase. Um, poor fiscal planning. Yes, um, till recently, when the, the whole country is now a fiscal planning area, but there was very poor fiscal planning. High cost of equipment and construction materials. That one is very evident. Yes. Conclusions. Irregular maintenance, cumulative effects of environmental loads, age and overload are key factors to bridge deterioration. Assessment of bridge condition states is preliminary step to having bridges in a good condition, durable and safer. Now that we have recommended assessment of bridge condition, we went to do assessment of highway bridges for safety enhancement. That was the second paper, which was uh, published in a, a conference, uh, um, and then a conference which was uh, um, um, held in Shanghai. The objectives of this paper were to show superficial bridge damages 
justify the need to regularly inspect bridges for maintenance, to provide baseline data as basis for subsequent investigations. The methodology used was a, a combination of several used the visual inspection, which was quick, and we were able to cover those point those 22 bridges in reasonable shorter time. Non-destructive tests was used and some destructive tests. We used uh, those equipment. Uh, there is a, a drill, for example, trying to locate a, uh, a, a, a river within the concrete. This one was used uh, to test chloride and carbonation, which are very strong uh, enemies which cause corrosion within the, 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 the concrete of the bridge and also attack the reinforcement bar and it can cause um, rust of the bar and then of course the weakness of the deck or any element of the bridge. So here I am trying to drill and the drilling was after using a cover meter to detect where this river is. And uh, here the hole, this hole, uh, we removed some uh, powdered concrete for, to test uh, chloride uh, ions and then we, also, we injected enophthalene to detect carbonation. And the, here there was no carbonation. Once phenolphthalene turns purple, you know that there is no carbonation. But escalate, we had been warned that we shouldn't actually do work on highways because of the sensitivity, and we had to replace some mortar in that hole. We did a lot of document reviews and literature. These are some of the results. Um, on abutments, we uh, categorized results according to elements. On abutments, we found some spores, weak, uh, cracks, scoring, some signs of scoring, no base protection, and these are the percentages where we found those damages. But 44.6% of the decks we surveyed, we found some denomination, spores, corrosion, which was longitudinal, uh, uh, the, the, the longitudinal and transverse uh, cracks. Uh, poor drainage due to blocked drains accounted for about 27% uh, of the bridges and the uh, vegetation overgrowth around the bridges was accounted for, for half of the, uh, the, uh, 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 of the, the bridges. There is a high percent of river channels, 32% of the bridges. And uh, Score and erosion accounted with 90%, but of course there was some kind of intersection in some other pictures. A conclusion. We used a combined methodology just to reduce errors produced by a single method, and we capitalize on the advantages of those uh, methods. The quality of uh, inspection uh, is improved, hence more accurate condition assessment and reliable decisions are made once you use combined methodology. Carbonation is not widespread, and chloride tests reveal long cons uh, low concentrations. This was a for example, the highest recorded of chloride test 
revealed about 0 0.17 percent, uh, 1.7 percent rather. Carbon carbonation was uh, about a quarter of the bridges. That's where we witnessed carbonation in uh, bridge elements. Long-term deterioration is limited uh, because we know that carbonation and chloride um, ingress are major causes of deterioration. And so we concluded that actual long-term deterioration in those bridges is limited. The identified flaws on bridges affect public safety. And so we went further to do identified flaws on bridges which affect the concrete to, 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 to verify whether actually identified flaws affected the concrete strength. And our next paper, this was uh, in a conference published by, uh, 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 presented, uh, uh, this was presented in Johannesburg University. And uh, it was also published uh, as a conference paper. Objectives to evaluate the impact of environmental conditions on near surface structure integrity of concrete to interest bridge managers to identify and incorporate comprehensive strengths in the planning of monitoring and inspection to provide strategic information to facilitate prioritization of maintenance, repair, and rehabilitation of critical bridge elements. And this is what we did. We used a rebound hammer test. A rebound hammer test is based on the correlation between the strength on the surface of the concrete and then the compressive strength of the uh, the cover of uh, the, the concrete cover. Target test regions were very key core uh, elements of the bridge. That's the decks, the bridge abutments, and the piers. The test points, for example, on this bridge, this illustration of the bridge, and even here was the abutment. Um, the we had. Uh, uh, on, on, on each abutment, for example, I had a minimum of, of, of uh, three uh, test points on that was a single uh, on a single location, and we on each test point we had 10, 12 readings. Uh, this one is sorry. This one is a um, it's a it's a column actually. Uh, on on Ngaromenda Bridge. These were the results. The results <coughs> um, on the distribution of concrete strengths in bridge elements, the average concrete strength was found to be lower in piers and abutments than in decks. There was a higher variation in concrete strength for abutments and piers than in index. Uh, you can see, for example, this is uh, Panga, Panga 2, and this is uh, the abutments. And the, the decks, you can see that it's some kind of level. And the possible explanation was H. All of these bridges tended to have a lower values to produce lower values of concrete uh, compressive strength. The location, high speed of water, uh, uh, those elements which were located, especially piers and abutments, which were located in high speed water, uh, were found to have also some lower uh, concrete uh, compressive strength. Bridge edge and element strengths, this, uh, there was a small negative correlation between the edge and all elements, and which symbolizes that probably long-term exposure to moisture and abrasion would have been the cause. 
and then intermittent exposure of moisture and temperature in wet and dry seasons. The correlation of strength between bridges, bridge elements across the, all the bridges, they showed no correlation between bridge elements, uh, between uh, both horizontal and vertical readings showed no correlation. And uh, the also explanation was that these bridges which we studied, they have some they had some similar environmental conditions and structural design. Conclusion. All the bridges, the tune of 50 years, had a good quality of concrete, and suggesting that they could have been constructed with high standard specification specification. More information was needed. For example, the original intended concrete length was needed to be able to draw strong conclusions. Bridge condition assessment and evaluation of compressive strength revealed damage types and the vulnerable highway bridges, aggressive environment to exposure. So the studies provide information for prioritization of MR and R, maintenance, repair, and rehabilitation. And then we went up, we went further to prioritize. Now that we had information, we, we, the paper which was produced in prioritization of maintenance of highway bridges was published by Technoscience and Development, the International Journal of Technoscience and Development. Objectives of the paper to develop a support decision on prioritization of highway bridges using knowledge-based might criteria model system to provide an insight of bridge condition with careful consideration of environmental cons conditions as a major causal factor of deterioration of highway bridges. Knowledge-based and my criteria analysis and scoring model by Charles Yankos were adopted. So this is the knowledge-based uh, model where we feed in the attributes, get the criteria used, and then we get the ranking system. <coughs> the criteria for selection, we had the information, so we had the knowledge. Damage types, we were based on Bakamweska et al, the first paper, or rather the second paper. Uh, surface concrete strengths, based on the third paper. The assumption was that uh, bridges degrade with age, and that was also based on the third paper. Fry potential, we had a lot of literature, which gave us, and also we threw our visit to the bridges, we observed the potential uh, basing on solar types, vegetation cover, the topography of the catchment, erosion potential. This was based on rainfall, erosivity, soil durability, slope slip, steepness, slope length, vegetation cover, and this was also derived from literature. Parameter setting by Charles Yapos. Uh, that equation of priority index, it considers, it equates priority index as the summation of the weight for attributes. That was the input information in our model. And then the R, which is the weight of option, which is uh, the options which were mentioned, in, uh, which we shall look at in the next slide. But these are the damages which we uh, highlighted on our bridges. Priority index, priority rating was done, high, medium, and low. Priority ratings were transformed into numerical uh, values, and this priority index was, we used the uh, MS Excel to calculate or to analyze this information. Uh, multiple damage types were considered separately as we shall see. This is the attributes, the input information, the options, for example, rebar corrosion, and 
the option is hard weight, and all this weight for each attribute will always equal to one, so that we don't change the, the, the weights of the input parameters. For the rating was done, the example, the cuff bridge, for example, raster and flux with medium, normal, compressive strength, because we had constraints which was normal, edge was between 50, 20 and 50, this was uh, rated differently. Flight potential was low, erosion potential was moderate. That's what, how it was done. Parameter ranking was done. This was the result, uh, the model priority in the indices. But we made a percentage, this was per percentage calculated over the total percentage, the maximum one would get. And this was the model results, priority ranking, and this was we, for validation, we uh, employed, we, we, we requested an expert to give us his views on the maintenance priority of these bridges. And uh, we found out actually that uh, we concurred in about four bridges. The, the first and second one, and then the last two, because we considered 18 bridges. So, to get a value, an index, which we can, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, rather, to get the comparison of these two parity uh, indices, rankings, we used the, the root mean uh, square deviation, which gave us, when we normalized it, it gave us 15.4% uh, similarity of those uh, rankings. So the difference between the system and expert rankings is 15.4%. It showed that there was some kind of relationship. Um, actually, when we made a, 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 a regression, it was something like, a, a error was something like 85%. Similarities in the bridge rankings could be as a result of changes that are obvious to the researcher and the expert. Opinion is from several experts would probably have changed the trend and improved the model. Advantages of the knowledge-based uh, system is that we always keep record. Uh, these experts, sometimes they die and we lose information. And also, it is very easy. Conclusion. The decision-making process to assist bridge managers in planning uh, monetary, uh, ma uh, maintenance, repair, and rehabilitation has been presented. The flight potential has been considered to, prove, to pose more risk than all other input parameters. And this is what we are going to look at. The next paper is an estimate, an estimate of flight risk to highway bridges under stationary and non-stationary processes. The objectives analyze the river flow and rainfall time series of river catchments, namely Ruiz, Manafa, Kafu, and Tochi, to estimate the risk of floods to highway bridges using annual maximum discharge values and return periods to show the need to change strategies of highway bridge management. So we got data from DWRM and then uh, the National uh, uh, Meteorological Authority. And these are the areas where those bridges and the attachments are there. Methodology, we are assuming stationality, that is, we are assuming the constant statistical properties of river flow, and the non-stationality was the reverse, that statistical properties vary over time. The statistical measures included annual maximum discharge values were determined from all data series of representative rivers. We developed the mean annual maximum discharge. Uh, we, we, we derived the mean annual maximum discharge, mu and this standard deviation alpha were calculated for each site. And of course, the gamble 
model was subjected to empirical CDF to give us a fitting. So probability extreme floods of, uh, and time periods were calculated. <coughs> we got the percentiles of from the CDF and the, which were corresponding which were corresponding to the time periods. Um, we concluded in this paper that return levels of maximum floods are predicted based on period one and two, even when we had period two, three, when we extrapolated, we found that actually the coefficient of variation is the same. The trend in discharge and precipitation is strong in data of climate changes occurring. The trend towards future discharge levels in three of the four rivers, because there was only a couple which did not show a trend, indicate bridge, bridge design basing on stationarity may no longer be valid. General conclusions. The limited presence of rust stains in most uh, structures showed that there is they were made of good concrete. With aging and increase of stock of bridges, a computerized bridge management system is a plausible, a plausible tool to help monitoring and also in modeling and maintenance. Estimates of extreme floods in the context of climate change are crucial for planning and maintenance of road infrastructure. This research preempts a strategic decision mechanism towards overall bridge assessment. Recommendations. The study needs attention by INURA because the health very important issues. It should be integrated in a wider decision making and policy formulation processes on planning maintenance for bridges. Design robust bridge structures for longer useful life to minimize, uh, to, to, to maximize the returns on uh, available capital and also on the natural and available natural sources. And I take flood risk analysis to help bridge designers make informed decisions, reduce bridge failures, loss of lives and property. Further research investigates the maximum bridge load bearing capacity of highway bridges, risk consequences and uncertainties of bridge failures to come up with the risk best strategy for bridge maintenance, so very important. Impacts of potential climate change on uh, such as uh, high winds, uh, high temperatures, on the life cycle bridges should also be studied and investigate the way and means of developing an appropriate suitable comprehensive bridge management system for efficiency of management of bridges. Key contributions. No studies on concrete cover strength in Uganda. If you go to Google Scholar and you say concrete cover strength in Uganda, it will show you what I'm missing right now. No studies on priority maintenance of bridge, bridges in Uganda, the same. Many studies on, on climate change and flood risk, but none has been specific to bridges and for Uganda. Dissemination through conferences and workshops was very well done, and the study has contributed two journal papers, the knowledge, two international papers, and one is in progress. I acknowledge my seasoned supervisors, Professor Sven Anderson and uh, Professor Jackson Makari. These were standing at Half Bridge. The Swedish International Development Corporation and Macquarie University for the support, the staff of Macquarie University and the Lund University for their support, family and friends. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hilary, for being in time. You have been late by 40 seconds which is good. Uh,
colleagues, uh, let me start by introducing some people that I did not introduce at the beginning. First is uh, the Ugandan supervisor. Of course, I made the remarks about his experience, but he, he was not yet here. He was uh, being held by traffic because he works outside town. Professor Jackson, Mwakal, you're welcome. Two, I was sort of in a hurry, so I, I mentioned the, the principal, but I didn't say much about him. Professor Henry Agna Litre, our principal in Senate, you are welcome. And thank you for always giving us time to appear for our presentations, both for PhD defense and the master's viva voce sessions. Our deputy principal, Dr. Veni Nakaziwe. I understand you are now an associate professor. <laughs> Welcome. These are very, very busy people. That if you can see them here, it's an indicator uh, of the, the value that they give to such presentations. Uh, let me hope that uh, Leonard and Sven, you are still online. Are we together? Yes, I'm here. Oh, that's very, very good. Now, the next, the next uh, phase of the defense is an engagement between the opponent, Professor Leonard, and uh, our student, uh, Hilary Bakamwesika. So, Hilary, I request you that you take all your luggage, whether it is normal or excess, to that seat where the opponent can uh, clearly see you. And uh, Leonard, we are giving you up to maximum one hour so that you engage the candidate. You are supposed to go over an intellectual discourse so that you go into the nitty gritty of the work. The public can see you, we are very attentive. So here you can take your seat. Yeah, just close and go over there. You can pull the chair so that you use the desk. So, Leonard, you are good to go. Well, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to study the work of Hilary Bakamesia. And I'm very happy that we could make this with, uh, through Skype. That, that, that's the first experience for me to make an opposition by Skype. But I think it's very good that we can make it in this way, so you, you can sit in Uganda and I can be here in Sweden and we can have this conversation and, and, and go through these things. Uh, we, we have done something via telephone in Sweden earlier, but not on, on this way, and I, I think this improves and shows uh, that, that we are living in a new kind of world where digitalization and internet is going to be more and more important and it can get us together. So, uh, about myself, I, I'm a professor of uh, structural engineering here at the New University of Technology in Sweden. And I have been studying bridges for, for the last 40 years. And uh, during the last years, it has especially been regarding the, 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 the maintenance and the assessment of existing bridges to see what capacity they have. And uh, so, so I was very interested in this subject that, that uh, Hillary has uh, shown here. And then um, one more thing, when I make some uh, comparison between uh, Uganda and uh, Sweden, and I saw that um, uh, Uganda has a population of some 42 million people, and in Sweden we, we have uh, some 8 million, so you are uh, much more people than we are. But on the other hand, you, you have about uh, uh, let's see now, 7,000 bridges, and we have about uh, four times uh, that, that amount. So, so and, and our country is a little doubling the size of yours. So, so you have you, you have an ability to, to grow there, and, and there will be more bridges in the future, I'm sure, when, 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 the, when there is a further development in place. But the bridges are very important. Uh, for the development of the country and for a, a good infrastructure that, that is a prerequisite to have a, a, a good development. So, so, well, it's an interesting theme, this, 
And uh, I would like to ask uh, Hilary why he chose this theme for his uh, thesis. Yeah, the, reason, the reason why he chose vulnerability of concrete bridges is that uh, one, they are very important, but they were threatened by our climatic conditions time and again over the uh, uh, several decades. There has been a lot of bridge collapses, and uh, hardly do we spend a year without having about five bridges collapsing. So it really made me interested in understanding what causes these collapses, and the collapses were mainly during the the the, dry, the, the wet seasons after rains. And they say, ah, the, the bridge has been washed away. And they, uh, the, for example, steel bridges, they are, they are, they are, they are quite old, and they, to the tune of about 50 years, and they have been collapsing even a week ago, one collapsed. So, these were hampering movements of people, and also transport, and also, of course, uh, I found out that they are quite costly in terms of uh, interventions by UNRWA, for example, in the routine and other things, even in terms of environment. Thank you. Yes, yes, I, I agree. It's a very important subject. And uh, the reason that, that uh, we really get very heavily into this subject here in Sweden some uh, 15 years ago was that I wanted to increase the accident load on the, a railway line that we have here in Northern Sweden transported in iron ore from uh, the iron mines to the coast and to the harbors. And I wanted to uh, lower the cost for it. And to lower the cost, I want to increase the accident loads. So, so, so that is uh, something what is happening with many bridges, that, that, uh, that there is an increase, there is a development, and then uh, the, the, the companies, they want to have heavy loads on it. And I think that that's something that happened in, in, in Uganda too. And uh, you had uh, have some examples in, in your thesis uh, that, that, that there are heavy loads and you have these uh, way station uh, where, where you check the capacity or, or, or the, the, the thing, or how much weight there are. But, but that, that is something that, that is increasing too. And uh, when we have been studying bridges, we have found that many bridges have uh, some uh, extra capacity. They were designed in a conservative way, and that we can be very happy for. And uh, what I was interested in here, comparing Uganda with Sweden, is if, if there was any influence uh, of, of, the, of the change. I mean, uh, before 1962, the English were uh, having uh, some impact on the bridge design in Uganda, but after that, you've been able to do it yourself. Do, do you, ha, ha, are you aware of any change in policy or something like that? Because uh, some of your bridges are before 62 and some of them are after, but most of them are, are about uh, from this time. Um, my study, of course, concentrated on all, most of uh, all the bridges, mainly. But of course, we have even newer ones, even one year, even uh, five years. Uh, what I have realized is that uh, first there were fewer bridges during the colonial times, and the management of those bridges was there was fewer bridges and uh, fewer uh, less population for example in 1961 uganda was about 11 million people uh, so you find that uh, the, the 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 traffic density on those bridges was quite low and uh, the maintenance of those bridges has 
We cannot really say that it hasn't improved. It has improved. Of recent, actually, we have a very capable management in UNRWA. But still, even in Sweden, you find bridge failures. So bridges fail just because of so many factors. It could be technical, it could be uh, the, the factors are related. But the only problem we have is maintenance, regular maintenance, and also uh, technical inspections, which will reveal the cause of the bridge. Of course, all these factors are violated. They work synergetically to bring about the collapse of bridge. The example is the, uh, these uh, the steel bridges, which which I have like, highlighted in my in my thesis. So it's like taking a ninety-year-old person to Morocco to to the hospital. Well, the ninety year uh, old person has a caught, has been caught stealing and beaten, but when the person reaches Morocco, they say, ah, this person has died of overbreeding. But actually, there is old age, there is probably cancer, there is so many other things. So it's accumulation of so many things, accumulation of lives. So in a nutshell, is that the maintenance culture has almost remained the same, but of course the the the, the expansion of of the, the network has increased. And also we have two technical people to manage that big road network. And of course lack of other things such as road uh, bridge management system which is computerized because it's the way to go with this expansion of, of structures. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we, we can see that there are uh, very many similarities between the, the, the bridges in, in, in our countries, but there are also differences. And the, especially you have this very high growth of development in Uganda, it makes a higher pressure on the bridges there. So, so, so that, 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 that makes it very interesting. I, I, I agree that it's a very interesting subject that you have chosen, that, 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 that it, it's quite important. Um, you have done several different kinds of uh, studies to, to cover the, 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 this area. And can you comment a little bit on how you choose the, the, the different uh, ways you have been studying this. You, you have used uh, literature and you have done some tests and you have done the interviews and, and you have done simulations. Can, can you comment on, on the balance between these different uh, kind of tests, these different kind of approaches you, you can do? I, I mean, uh, you, you can do this just as a pure literature study and then you can see what others have done. But that, and you can also focus on, on what's happening to the bridges and, and do field studies. But, but can you comment on, on the balance you have chosen between the different, uh, these different approaches you have taken? Thank you, Professor. That's a very interesting question. Uh, I think the different approaches were dictated by one, the resources available. Two, Within the limited resources available, can I do the best? So I looked at, I consulted a lot of literature, a lot of people, and uh, there were many methods, of course, but those, the methods which I chose were, first of all, given the time limitation and the resources available, were actually uh, ideal in those conditions. Secondly, I had a number of sites to cover and uh, I needed an easier means of doing it and also within the time available within the, the, the time, uh, uh, time available and also uh, the, the, the representativeness of some of those sites 
because I could not, for example, choose bridges in Kampala City because the conditions in Kampala are quite different from the conditions along the highways. The traffic density is very high. The population density is very, very high. And definitely, the impact on bridges becomes high. And probably, I'm not sure of this, but uh, probably the strength of the bridges is also maybe considered. Uh, considers some of those factors. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now we, we should uh, go into the details of, 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 of the thesis and, 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 and go through it and make some uh, comments on it. And uh, the, the general uh, approach is, is that you have a summary and, and that you have a, a five appended papers here. And the papers give the, 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 the details of it. And uh, if I uh, got it right, uh, uh, of the five papers, uh, uh, that there was one that was uh, published uh, in, in a journal uh, when the thesis was printed, but, but then you got another paper like, accepted for publication during the time since it was published. Is, is that right? I have two journal papers. That is Paper four and paper one. Yes, yes, right, good. Good. Yeah. And then, then you have the conference papers that are also published, but but, but the yes. last paper number five about the flood risk, eh? yes. that, that's not yet published, is that right? Yes, not yet published, but it is in the process. Yeah, very good. Very good. It's very interesting. Just uh, for uh, clarification and uh, updating what, what, what has happened. And uh, uh, as you remember, I had the privilege to discuss with you three years ago when you presented your licentiate thesis at the London University of Technology. And we had a very interesting discussion at that time. So, if we go at the first chapter, the introduction, uh, there you give an overview of uh, the, the, the literature in, in the area, and the, the purpose and the, the scope of the study, and you present the 22 bridges in Uganda, in, in the different parts of Uganda, and uh, I think uh, that is quite interesting, and uh, on pages 8 and 9, I'm in the thesis, you have uh, Focus on the bridges as you can see what they look like and what kind of conditions they are. And uh, uh, the thing you, you can see there is that the uh, foundation seems to be the, the most uh, critical part of the it. And uh, there you also pose uh, on the page 10, you pose uh, uh, four research questions which you then answer and I think the, these uh, research questions are uh, uh, well they are quite good D did you consider any other research questions or how, how do you come to uh, the, the conclusion that it was just that, that it was these four research questions that you were going to study? And, and the fourth research questions that are about the environmental conditions and uh, how vulnerable the bridges are and uh, how it can be managed better and uh, systems and methodologies. Did, did you, uh, how, how did you uh, reason when you, when you choose these uh, four research questions? Thank you, Professor. The reasoning was, first of all, I must understand the status of the management of these bridges. Secondly, I needed to, to go further 
and understanding which factors are responsible for termination. And of course, this was derived from literature and uh, uh, inspection reports from UNRWA, and also myself through the surveys I made. Then I went to, after understanding the, what factors are responsible for the restoration, I went ahead to understand the potential risks because the, the factors which were, uh, when I was analyzing the factors responsible for deterioration, actually, I had considered before, I had considered issues to do with reinforcement corrosion. But eventually I changed. I found out that actually that's not the major cause of these major collapses. This can be applied to three bridges which are collapsing because of redundancy in the uh, these, uh, members, because of uh, maybe failure of some of the members, but it and, and the corrosion and lack of maintaining them because they corrode, but not concrete dominated bridges. So um, even the steel component of or steel composite bridges were still in good condition, so they just need some painting. And I found out that that was actually not the major cause. Even with the chloride test and the combination tests, they confirmed that that is not the major cause. Actually, I only witnessed rust in only two bridges out of the 22. Although, countrywide, I have witnessed some rust in some of the bridges. But, in my study, only about three or two, I, I even find rust in there. So, now it was a, an elimination method. So I had to eliminate that from my equation and say, now, it, what could be the real trying to get the most probable uh, reason for the collapses of these bridges. So I found that environmental conditions were actually contributing most of these failures. Of course, remember, even you cannot eliminate corrosion from environmental conditions. So it's also an environmental issue. Because we all know that when there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide, there is a possibility of corrosion within the atmosphere. Although the issue of chloride was really very, very much limited because we don't apply ice on our roads, or rather, salt, we don't, and uh, we, we are not anywhere near uh, salt lakes, salt, salt uh, oceans and, and lakes. We have only one or two salt lakes, which are a little bit distant from the highway region. Uh, after identifying the extreme environmental conditions, as a major cause, then I went ahead to design to, to, to the, the, the risk, how, how, especially floods, how can we risk these floods? How can we uh, understand the impact of floods? Does the environmental conditions and the projected environmental conditions, would, 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 do you, would, would I think that these ones were going to influence promote more collapses of bridges and that's what I found out eventually that actually there is needed to build to design more robust bridges and probably eliminate steel bridges from our bridge network. Thank you. Well, th thank you very much. It's uh, very interesting to, to learn that, that there is this uh, development. You start out with some hypothesis, but then when you go out and do the work, you find that uh, it changes and, and, and then you have to readjust. And, and that, that's what's happened when you are doing applied research. You see what's happening in reality and then, then you try to, to modify and to adopt to that and see what, what are the causes, what, what can you go forward.
Maybe. So I, I think that, that that's an, uh, that, that's something that uh, often happens. So if we go on, we come to chapter two, the research approach, and uh, we have already been into this with the, the strategy and the collection method. So then we have the fourth uh, five papers and. Uh, you have uh, done on page uh, 16 then the, the investigation of current stage of the uh, bridge maintenance and, uh, and, and, and you will come on to the, the, these uh, things that, that you have already discussed uh, with the influence of the yeah, environment and we are coming back to the uh, uh, so, so, so I think we covered that. We can go on to chapter three, the theoretical framework. And then maybe you can comment there, uh, you have this uh, figure four, where you have the six stages in the life of, of, of a bridge. Um, can you comment on that uh, figure? how it influenced your work and uh, what, what, what part of it that is especially interesting to, uh, to the outcome of your thesis so, on page 18. Okay. Um. This is a life cycle of bridges. Bridges begin with conception and uh, someone must have an idea, a model of what a bridge should look like and why such and such a bridge should be uh, erected, built on that spot. Some of the factors which can influence that uh, things like geotechnical uh, information, things like hydraulics, things like uh, population, even social economic factors will influence the type of bridge and is going to get. Then after getting after the inception phase, you go ahead to do some develop a design of what you want. From the design, you have uh, uh, the, the construction. Then from construction, of course, there are many stages in construction, trying to develop uh, who should build the capacity of the farms, which should be involved in building the past of construct, uh, the, 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 the the people who are hired to build. Then you have services. This is involves the service life of a bridge from construction to maybe demolition or reconstruction. And that is involves inspections, the maintenance of a bridge and the rehabilitation if it's necessary. And then you have the collapse of the bridge, or maybe just as I have shown an example of Nege Bridge, it's not necessarily a collapse, but it was rendered absolute. And then another one was constructed. So that is the life cycle of the bridge. I think it's important here that, that you have uh, one line that talks about preventive maintenance. That, that you can do maintenance that, that, that is to, to, to prevent that, 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 that something is happening to the bridge. And you have uh, pointed out that that, uh, that, that, that uh, could be improved. You, you showed that, that you have this uh, vegetation that goes on the bridge and uh, that, that there are uh, when the, the, the river bed is, uh, when there is a lot of debris there, that, that prevent it, that it's important that, that you do this preventive maintenance. 
Uh, some, sometimes you, you, you forget that the preventive maintenance is uh, very important, but I think you have, a, you, you have pointed to that here, and I, I think that is, uh, that is very good. So, so I, I agree with this uh, theoretical framework that, that you have been, been, been working on. Thank you. Thank you. And then, then you are going through the, some, some different uh, uh, codes and uh, literature and uh, the methods you have been working on with the, the, uh, to, to, to check the duration of the concrete and on uh, page 24 uh, you have an uh, illustration of, of this uh, Schmidt hunter that, that you've been uh, working with uh, when you checked the, the concrete of the bridges and uh, I was. Uh, it, it, it pleased me to see that the the, the, the test results that, that that you got was so good. I mean, you you could uh, may expect it that the earlier bridges, the the, the, the concrete strengths would have been reduced there. But uh, as you showed during your presentation there, usually it was quite good. It was. Uh, just in some of the abutments that, that you have some uh, low values. And uh, yeah, that, that, that seems that, to that there has been a, a, a good do workmanship when, when the bridge were constructed. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, you check the, the, the cracks, the, the, the crack width. Can you comment on the cracking of the bridges a little something? Yes. So you have uh, the, the impact of crack, you are discussing it on page uh, 28 and uh, 29 yes, yes. in the Yes, uh, um, yeah, lots of cracks, although uh, apparently, the cracks which we saw, most of the cracks we saw were not actually structural. They were probably cracks which were due to uh, uh, maybe uh, which were during construction, which were maybe during shrinkage of, of, of the concrete shrinkage generated cracks and uh, they were not posing a very big threat but those ones which were be posed which were actually which were posing a big threat were though they were not very common they are they penetrated up to the bus and then they influenced they brought about to uh, rust of the rivers which can be a very, very serious thing if it's not corrected. I have given an example of uh, uh, a bridge in Bujiri where actually there is a discoloration of that rust. And on top of the bridge, it is evident that even the, the reinforcement uh, bars are all, all uh, exposed the atmosphere and there is some rust and that is exactly the water which passes through and goes down the bridge that can be dangerous for bridges but uh, we also know that from literature that uh, the cracks which are very dangerous, must reach the level of rebirth. If they are not reaching the level of rebirth, they may not be dangerous. But with time, with the um, things like overload, they can increase and reach the level of rebirth and become dangerous. Thank you. Yes, uh, cracks is really one of the big problems in concrete structures and we have been studying it in Sweden for, for decades and we are trying to avoid cracking during construction by taking care of the, that the temperature
temperature rise uh, that, that appears in complete view in harmony, that, 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 that is taken care of. And, uh, nowadays there are uh, new concretes coming with uh, the steel fiber reinforced concretes where you can try to spread the, the, the cracks to, to minimize them if there are fewer and smaller cracks that not grow so wide. That, that, that you won't have the problem with the corrosion, as, as you mentioned there. But the, it, it's good that, the, that there isn't that many cracks uh, that they are not that uh, dangerous, because uh, th that, that is a problem in concrete structures and in other structures, in other countries with, with, a, with a hot climate and a, and a wet moisture climate, then that, that, that the corrosion is one of the biggest problems, and I'm, I'm happy to see that it's only on a few bridges that, that you will be really encountered corrosion, and in the other bridges, uh, that, that they were quite good, and, and, and as you say, uh, that there wasn't much corrosion, so, so that's, that's quite good. Uh, so, well, about Overloading. If we come to page uh, 42 in, 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 the, in the thesis, there you have a section on overloading, and you have this um, wave section in Uganda, uh, which is something that that we do not have in Sweden. But but what we have encountered in Sweden is that, uh, that, that there is a risk that the people come with the more heavy vehicles uh, than uh, they are allowed to do. And I, I think it's a good idea with this uh, way station. Uh, can you say something on the other development of, of, of the way station? What, what, what's happening there? I mean, would increase traffic. I think it can be troubles up to carry power, do you do that automatically or do you do it manually? If I understand the right, most of it is done manually, but maybe you can comment on that. Yes, we have fixed the way bridge. We have way bridge, way bridges, way bridge stations. We have about eight way bridge stations in the, the whole country. And uh, half of them are fixed and half of them a mobile and they, they face problems of uh, technical staff and also problems of the drivers drivers are not well sensitized that is in their interest or the interest of the maintaining their sustaining the safety or their safety and the safety of roads to have limited load which is able to be carried by the roadway or the, the bridges that for that matter for this matter so they tend to avoid penalties they tend to overload and also avoid also way bridges uh, in an incident where if I went they had a problem of of road uh, of drivers once the rains they they overload and they try to avoid where they are because they would know where they are they are always communicating where these mobile bridges are the fixed bridges they use way in motion method of calculating axle load and gross weight uh, gross gross weight of the road they measure the characteristics of the road they measure, they have lots of information where the road the, the, the vehicle is coming, where it is the destination and other things. They have a database. But uh, they have also challenges of uh, monitoring of their system, the way the, 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 the supplier of the way bridges. Because most of these roads come from Kenya up to Uganda. There are different measurements in Kenya of the road and different measurements in Uganda. So there is need to harmonize some of those issues, especially the supplier of the way bridge and also the law which governs 
axolot, uh, the, the regulations which govern axolot and the gross weight. Um, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, Maybe we shall go on and then look at some of the papers where you present the, some of the, the, the details of your study here. And the, 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 the first paper you presented uh, quite good during your in introduction here with the SWOT analysis. Uh, so, so I think, think we can leave that one. But, but the, 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 the second paper, which is... Uh, description of the, the mean doing when you were out there uh, checking them. So I think that that's a description of the, of the uh, main part of your field work. And um, what, what, what I can, can see there is that uh, uh, the, 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 the concrete capacity was quite good and, and you have uh, said that too. But, but, but what we have also shown there in some of the pictures is that the, the, the vegetation is making uh, problems and, and that, that, that there are some uh, problems also with the, well, with the abutments and, and with the soil and scrap uh, preventing the, the, the river to come, come forward. Is that, is that the correct impression? Yes. Yes. Hello? Yes, that's it. Yeah, I can hear you. Very good. Yes, true. Yeah. yeah. Because that, that makes it uh, a little different from, from what, what we have here in Sweden. Here it's uh, mostly the... Uh, the loops that determine on and, and we, it, didn't, it doesn't uh, uh, get so much onto it here. Uh, so, so you, you have on, on, uh, in, in table 4 uh, where there is a summary of which elements condition and suggesting actions. You, you, you say that regarding the data, there is a poor drain it due into logging, for example, and there is uh, there's this denomination, but then uh, the river uh, to say vegetation over grows. You have 50% uh, of bridges that are affected with that, and the heavy silting or river channels, there are 32% uh, that, 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 that is damaged by that. So uh, th th these are quite important numbers, uh, and uh, uh, are, are, are the authorities aware of this and are they taking care of this or is this something that you want to highlight or to want them to do more about? I mean, this is all also about the maintenance to, to keep the bridge, uh, to have the, to get them better possibilities to, to carry their loads. Um, um, definitely, that would be my interest to let them know that the uh, regional maintenance is very, very important and uh, it can uh, um, prevent further lots of damages. It can make the bridge more durable. It can extend the service life of the bridge. Um, probably I should come up with uh, something like a pro uh, policy brief about this so that they can analyze. Otherwise, uh, the paper is published, so they can always uh, find it in, and read it. And I, I, I also yes. probably have to saturate this thesis and I take it to, for example, the bridge management agencies, so that can, the results can help them the management of their bridges. Well, thank you very much. If we go on to the third paper, the impact of environmental exposure on conflict strains in highway bridges in Uganda, that, that also gives some uh, uh, results of your tests there. And, and uh, you showed 
uh, picture uh, in, in figure three there uh, during your presentation where you can see how the strength varies in the different concrete bridges that you have been uh, studying and uh, you, you, you see the abutment and, 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 uh, and the, the piers and uh, uh, the, it, it seems that it is the abutment that has the, the, the largest variations there and, and there there is one uh, concrete bridge the MP2 there where, the, where you have a concrete strength that is less than 20 uh, how, how many tests, tests did you take to, to get this value I mean you have this uh, Schmidt hammer and, and you I guess you made uh, several tests at the different uh, sections there on, on, on this bridge and, and this was the uh, general uh, quality of the bottle there is that right? Yes, uh, that is it. Um, we had a minimum of three uh, test of, of three testy uh, points. Test locations with surfaces of the breed of the abutment, for example, the surface yes. would be a test location, and we had minimum of three test points and each test point we had between 11 10 and 12 readings for oh, each yes, that's good. sometimes when and you see that there is a point with low you yes uh, yes capacity low strength then, 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 then you want to make more tests there to see you you ignore it efficiency yes. is spread over that, the that is entire structures so you yeah. get uh, the suspicious there when you see something that, that is bad when it's good you 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 you, you, you can uh, go yeah. further on usually exactly. yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but uh, 20 megapascal that, that's still uh, uh, not not a bad complete quality so mm -hmm. so i when, when i first saw this i was uh, surprised that that, that that was such a hard High strengths and, and, and the mean strengths here in, 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 the, in the deck is uh, about uh, 40 and 50 megapascal. That, yes, that, that's yes. really good, yes, yes. especially if you take into consideration that, that the bridge are between 40 and 50 years old. So that, that, that's quite good. Thank you. If we go to paper four, uh, that, that's where you have these. Um, multi criteria model which is uh, quite I interesting there and uh, th there you have uh, checked a number of the bridges and and you went through the, the details you could just uh, take a look at uh, the three bridges here uh, the one that had the worst conditions, the one that had the best conditions, and, 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 and well, we can start with it, the, the tour there. So, if I read it uh, right here, uh, one with the worst conditions uh, was the NGM. Bridge where you had uh, abrasion on pier columns and uh, yes, sir. So, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the, the worst was the, the MAN bridge. Uh, MAN, there you had. Corrosion and spools, stone pitching, cables I'm reading in cases five, and blocked drainage. So uh, that, 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 that was the first one. So that's the last pitch, but one, and you uh, there encountered most of the differences. And uh, uh, interest. 
interesting thing is there that, that, that when you have a, a manual uh, evaluation of the bridge, when you have this uh, bridge expert looking at the bridges, he can come to the same conclusions. I, I would like to ask you, uh, what information did this bridge expert have when, when he made this uh, evaluation? Uh, how, 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 well, uh, what did he know when he made the evaluation? What kind of facts did he have? Yes, um, I went to, in 2011, when I had just started, I was introduced to the bridge management unit in the UNRWA, which was manned by only four, four people. And uh, there were two experts in the structural engineering, now an environmentalist and another one. And uh, unfortunately, one expert who was leading the bridge management unit left, probably for Green Pasture. And I remained with only one in touch with me, who was very confident and who had moved all over the bridges. He actually gave me a list of 300 bridges which have been surveyed, their locations. Of course, I added my uh, investigation on locations, but it was very helpful to me. And I knew that this is the person who know, knew actually all these, most of these bridges. Uh, incidentally, we have very few structural engineers in Uganda, and uh, it's difficult to have a person who has moved to every bridge, for example, doing some condition assessment. They only go there in the case of, because uh, most of these are, uh, are, 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 are uh, they, they, they get consultants to, to do uh, monitoring and inspections uh, or, uh, or these bridges uh, to do some maintenance work. So he has he had himself done this work, moved around all those bridges because he had stayed, he had begun with Inra up to now, he's actually in Inra, and uh, he had moved all over. So he knew most of these, the, the bridges which I was talking about, especially the highway bridges anyway, which was directed under his docket. So I, yes. he was the competent, most competent person to give me this information. Yes. And then I think it's very good that when you do this multi-criteria study, you, you, you get the same opinion regarding which bridge is in the best condition, yes. condition and which is in the worst condition. Uh, it, 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 it's uh, the, the same as this expert, yeah. Yeah. So, so that is good. Yeah. Then I looked at, at the, bri the bridge, that now I come to this MGM bridge, because there was the, the biggest difference between uh, uh, the priority ranking by, by the expert. He, he ranked at number seven. And, and then you, with this uh, multi criteria, you ranked it as uh, number two. So there was the, the, the biggest difference between the, the, the judgment of the bridges. And then uh, this was this MGM bridge. Uh, yes. Can you comment on the uh, differences there between the, 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 the this model and the, the, the yes, yes. Well, the, yes, yes. Um, the idea of, of this expert evaluator? That is uh, in Garumenda Bridge. Garumenda Bridge is found in Mbarara town, a certain town about 300 kilometers from Kampala here. Uh, my, my ranking was based on literature and the, the river which pass which 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 the, the, the river crossing of Garumenda is a river which has a very big uh, catchment and the, that catchment is heavily encroached 
This is from literature, from every day, from published information. It is uh, sometimes very much threatened by erosion. Even visually, when I went to the site, I found that there was a lot of erosion and the, uh, uh, the threat to erosion was very high due to the practices, farming practices upstream especially. So probably, visually it is in a good condition, yes, but the potential for it to be affected by environmental conditions is very high. So I think that is what brought about the difference. Of course, it's interesting to see where the differences are, because that is a way of uh, how, how robust the system is and what for implants. But, but uh, that is just one of them. The other ones, uh, that, that they compare pretty well to each other. So, so that, that, that uh, is a recommendation. And the system seems to be fairly simple, but uh, still give uh, good results. So if we then come to the last paper regarding the uh, floodings uh, we have seen there, and uh, in, in, in that uh, there is a small change in, uh, in, in the total rainfall, but it's not uh, really very big. If you look at, for example, the figure six you have in, the, in, in this paper, there you, have, there you can see the, the, the rain for the season and rain for and the trends during the period 1950 to 2014. And uh, you, 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 you can see a, a slight increase there from the uh, if you take the total annual rainfall, it starts about uh, 900 millimeter and then it goes up to uh, 1000 millimeter in 2010, the, the mean value there. So the, 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 there isn't uh, that, that big, but, but uh, you, at the same time you can see that, that there is really a change. That, 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 that there is a change and it's a, it's a stable change. And, um, this was done in 2014, and I, I, I think, you, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the, the, these uh, heavy rainfalls, uh, which uh, now seems to be coming with more intensity and at uh, shorter time levels, they, they are a threat to, to many bridges. And uh, have, have you seen an, any further uh, examples of this uh, during your uh, study that, so, so that you have been more uh, sure that uh, this is what, what you have to be looked into? Uh, there are quite a number of examples during my study and um, m uh, most of them are not directly within, within my research area but they are affecting bridges which are outside which are managed not which are not managed by Unora and others uh, I've seen them physically for example um, there was a an incident which happened in 2013 where we had flood which took place in western Uganda and uh, it did not take the bridge which I was studying but there was a lot of impact I have shown actually the bridge but uh, upstream uh, because of uh, probably a combination of flooding river flooding, flash flooding and probably uh, Glacial Lake outbursts because it, they are on the foothills foot, foot 
of, of the foot of the hill, a very big range, Mount Gwenzori is a very big range. And uh, from my analysis is that there was an outburst of water from the top of the mountain where there is an ice cap. And this ice cap from literature, it has reduced by 50% in the last century. And it is blamed on climate change from literature. And they, because of the several lakes which are around the peaks of that mountain, they have accumulated a lot of water. And there was an outburst. That's one type of flood which took place, and of course that outburst could not be contained by the rivers, especially in Yamamba River, that could be a river flood, and of course the fresh floods which took place just down, down, downstream around Lake, uh, Lake George. So it took several, two bridges, and that was a uh, an incident which I witnessed a shortly after it happened, maybe less than a month, and I came back, I went back actually two, two months ago to witness what has happened. Good thing has been reinstated. So, in a nutshell, in the sites which I studied, I have not with but I have seen a very big potential for that happening. Um, on uh, the bridge in Chibimba, the Dava Ark Bridge, concrete bridge, water, I have several, several gone there and water is, there is no water virtually, but from the, the, the locals and from what I saw, the flood level increases up to the bottom of of the deck, touches the bottom of the deck, and sometimes they say it actually overflows, and that is a very, very serious thing, because it was a, the, the only bridge which was inscribed, but the, the year when it was built, in 1974. So I have witnessed some of those things. And they, this uh, the, the bridge which was ranked number one actually, as I said, was uh, was uh, has, has been now replaced. The bridge which was ranked number, the, which was on my first first uh, the first ride, uh, that that is uh, Manafa Bridge. In 2015, it failed and traffic had to be diverted for quite a while. Hello? That, that's the bridge. Okay, that's the bridge, which the, the, this, the photograph was taken in 2012, and the bridge collapsed, uh, failed in uh, 2015. I'm not, I'm not in the know of what is happening in that right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have gone on for one hour and five minutes, and maybe we should try to sum summarize. And, uh, uh, I, I would uh, give you uh, the last question here before I try to summarize. If you would uh, start this work now, uh, instead of for some uh, six to seven year, years ago, what, what would you do differently now than, 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 than you have, have, have done? If you know what you know now, how, you have, how would you have approached it? Would you have done it in a different way? Uh, probably not. I did it the best way I could. Yes? 
Yes, thank you. I I, I agree with you. I think the, the, this way of uh, organizing uh, the work, uh, starting with the uh, literature thesis, and then, then you make uh, interviews, and you have this questionnaire, and you uh, then, then you would make field studies to acquaint yourself with the real condition of the bridges, and uh, go around Uganda to, to see what's happening there and then uh, drawing uh, conclusions of this and trying to find a way of uh, making a bridge map management system and uh, making a, a method for uh, assessing the bridges, uh, what, what are the most important factors there, and you find that the environmental factors, that the, 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 the water, the increased uh, rate of water that are coming can damage the bridges, and you have to be uh, careful with the preventive ma maintenance. You, you must put more emphasis on the preventive maintenance to, to check what is happening with the bridges. If there are big patients, what, what, what about the abutments? How, how, how can you take care if the flood is increasing? You know, what, can, can you prepare for that? Can, can, you, can you do that? And, 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 uh, so uh, so I, uh, I think uh, you, uh, you have uh, done uh, quite good work and uh, I'm uh, pleased to have had the opportunity to, to, to study it and uh, when I wrote my evaluation here I, I concluded that uh, uh, you have sent in your data uh, in a logical flow and in a concise manner and when you have uh, cross references to other sections and with the specific objectives following through appropriate methods leading to the results and discussion of its objective and thus ensure that these conclusions can be logically drawn from the information gathered. And then you have summarized it in an abstract that is informative. And uh, yes, this, this is a professional and a scholarly output. And I would like to conclude uh, with a congratulation to you for having uh, finalized this work. And I'm uh, sure that, that it will have a good influence of the development in Uganda and also in, in the rest of Africa and the rest of the world. So, so congratulations to your work. Thank you, Werner. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very, very much, Leonard, for that engagement. I can assure you it has been enriching to most of the members of the public. Thank you very much. For sure we have gained a lot from your 40 plus years of experience in this area of bridges. I thank the candidate for being candid and confident in uh, answering the questions and responding to the comments that uh, the opponent, Professor Leonard, has uh, made. So Professor Leonard, the next phase uh, is where we are having uh, panelists or examiners of the thesis. Each of them is going to be given 15 minutes to engage the candidate. Since you are still online, yeah, it will be interesting for you to listen to the questions and the comments that uh, these gallant academicians are going to pose to the candidate. So please remain online. At the beginning of the session, I introduced the three uh, academicians who are going to be engaging the candidate. So since you are seated in front of the, the camera, you can turn and face the examiners. The first uh, person to engage the candidate will be Associate Professor John Baptist. Chiravira. So, John Baptist, I'm giving you up to 15 minutes. You can ask questions, make comments, and uh, clearly, you are good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. But I would like to know what is the procedure. Should I make my comments if the notes down and answers? Or? Well, there is no standard. It is up to you, whichever you prefer, as long as uh, there is a clear. Uh, engagement of the student, uh, the candidate. Thank, thank you. you. Um, uh, Hilary, thank you for the work. 
and I'm sure it has been praised by uh, the opponent, as he said. However, uh, as an academician, I have to make comments. Uh, I start by, uh, my comments with uh, general issues, then I go to specific, and uh, maybe specific to the subject. Uh, gen in general, the write-up, this is to be uh, submitted to Makerere, you need to look at the guidelines and then try to address issues. I find some things missing, like I was looking for a certain table, you mentioned that there is no list uh, of tables in the context. Now, uh, the other general thing I, I notice uh, uh, when I read the work, you seem to enumerate a problem and you don't come up with a complete solution. So my question would be, if I was an engineer at UNRWA, how would I use your report to make decisions or how will it help me? Uh, I'm basing this question on issues like, for instance, uh, some of the solutions or the co co recommendations you make are based on the same information you collected from the same people, the experts in general. So what, where is the new knowledge? How would somebody use this to make uh, the decision? Thank you very much. Um, one of contribution that is very significant is the methodology and the, at PhD level, that is a very, very good contribution, I understand. Uh, using, for example, priority maintenance is something which is very good, which can be used by UNRWA to manage the increasing number of bridges uh, then uh, we have, we tested uh, the uh, bridge strength. Now, why we tested bridge strength? We wanted to know whether actually these bridges can be, whether strength has been a very big factor in the attributing to their purposes. And whether actually if we talk of concrete, uh, compressive strength, that is surface strength though, but it can also culminate into once the surface is also affected, then it, the whole bridge can also be affected. So we wanted to give a highlight of what is actually happening in the bridges. And indeed, we showed it through condition assessment, we showed it through compressive assessment, we showed it through uh, analysis, uh, 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 presentation of uh, of uh, uh, carbonation and chloride. And to me, if you are in the UNRWA and you know that, ah, by the way, we should not concentrate on this, we should concentrate on this. Okay. Uh, maybe that comes. Since there is a little time. Um, when I read the thesis throughout, I don't see the quant quantification of issues. For instance, uh, some basic information. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned some, from your sample of bridges, you don't even mention how long the span, that, or the span of that bridge is. Then when we come to uh, issues like uh, that impact these bridges. I would I would be interested in seeing which factor impacts the bridge and, and which what to consider. For instance, we talk about floods, climate change. I, I don't see uh, this clearly coming out because if somebody was to make a decision, he will say maybe in this region we concentrate on this kind of factor. In this region, maybe it is age of the bridge. This doesn't come out properly. And uh, otherwise, uh, you, you talk 
about contributing to policy. If you are going to be writing a policy, I mean something to advise policy, which is not really a point of five, I don't think they will take it at that stage. They would rather indeed make a consultant to give me. I want a comment about that. Yes, uh, the, the, we measure the, the characteristics of bridges, the lengths, the, the, the geometry of bridges. And the, the, there is a table in the paper uh, 3, which shows the geometry, the characteristics, the soils and everything. The lengths, the span lengths, the play height. There is a table which shows that. Only that it was big and we couldn't show it. Uh, then the policy issue. Now, uh, the, uh, the information which is in this uh, thesis, uh, for example, paper five, it gives an, a, a, a very good, if you, were, if you were in parliament and said that, ah, in 50 years time, we are going to have such a level of flood. And given the current flood, this is likely to take 50% of the bridges. And that would be our okay enough. Okay, uh, now when we go to the supplements, if we go to supplement two, we start with supplement. Uh, when I read supplement two, for instance, I don't see any concrete conclusion or recommendation made from that supplement. Because all the when you conclude one, you you repeat the results in your uh, in that paper. You repeat what you have achieved. Then you push all the uh, all what should be done to further research. That's my comment about that paper. When we go to uh, paper three, we also have issues concerning quantification. I don't know, when I read that paper again, I find that uh, you mentioned strengths of the bridges, but uh, uh, if I'm to read this, I don't know what units you are using. You brought graphs, age, there is no unit indicated, and I think the assumption is that this is for maybe some of them in that area. Uh, when we look at again uh, on, on in that, that same supplement, page 867, you have two you have two graphs there plotted from uh, the data you collected. And then you try to fit the line of best fit. Yes. And uh, as you, there are no assumptions made, but from my little statistics, some of these lines are not really fitting. If you look at, uh, at the first graph, on, that is figure four, the first graph on the left. On the left. Uh, if you look at the distribution of points and where the line of best fit, I don't agree with that. Then when we, I know this is already a published paper, but I have to make a comment. The second one on the right, uh, it seems like the first point is an outlier, and I would pick, I would take that out, and then fit uh, the, the best line as possible. When we go to uh, the next page, figure five, again you have the second figure on the right, and there are some, maybe it might be the line of best fit, but you don't give us any assumption of confounding variables which could cause this kind of spread. Um, when we go to paper four, um, again, there are no clear assumptions made, and then you, you assume a model, you don't do any sensitivity analysis, and then you make conclusions like that. When we go to page five, Sorry, Supplement 5, uh, which was published after, I think, after submission. 
again, uh, one, you assume that this is a probability distribution without giving assumption. In my view, you should have given a justification why you choose, you, you assume it to be probabilistic. Because this could be, in my view, again, this, I, I will try to make an anomaly. I, 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 if I link to where we are standing, okay, issues concerning environment, market dynamics, demand, inventory management, and environment which you are trying to model here is more discrete, it is more random, and a probability distribution function will not be used. So I would assume a stochastic uh, model for this uh, analyst rather than a probabilistic one. If you use a, a probabilistic one, then you must give assumptions to justify uh, why you are using that. Um, that is supplement five. Uh, then maybe if you could respond to that, and then I will wind up. Uh, supplement five, there was some assumption. The assumption was actually that uh, it was based on rainfall and, uh, and, uh, and flow that the, the higher the rainfall, the more the flow. And the, the, the maximum, the annual maximum uh, record was based to a certain rainfall which was very high. That was the assumption. But, is that the of rain now? but we know that there are other characteristics which influence the flow, such as that social economics, the, density, the, the drainage of the area, the settlement, the upstream, we know that uh, land use generally impacts on flow of, 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 of the flood flow. So we did not consider that for this for this study. Um, the I think that is that is it. Yeah. On the other issues of the, on the issues of uh, the graphs on paper in paper three, for example, uh, yes, I will agree with you. Would not give, for example, age is in years, for example, and the strength is in uh, mega pascals. We did not indicate it. So sorry for that. On in paper four. You talked of this is an existing model which we used, the multiplicitarian model, and we we validated it as shown on page uh, by by using a technical expert for the Okay, finally. Uh, how will this contribute to improvement of the bridges in Uganda? Because you have not answered this question. Because I asked the, how can this help me? So how how does this? Because you collect data from the same people. You collect your uh, NDT tests, and I don't see where they kind of match uh, to come up with the, what can help Uganda improve. Uh, bridge ma management uh, as expected out of this this work. This work brings a lot of information to help UNRWA. One, it gives information of how UNRWA can be collected and proposes how UNRWA can store the information in order to manage the big stock of bridges. And probably it also is a, a reminder to UNRWA to make sure that the designers of these bridges they include they, they put they consider non-stationality instead of the stationality processes of climate which have been being used in the previous one. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, Kirari. Thank you uh, John Baptist for that engagement.
The next uh, uh, academician is Associate Professor Stephen Muchimi. So, Professor, can you engage the candidate? 15 minutes maximum. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Mireya, for the presentation that you've given us. Thank you. Uh, it has been quite enriching. Um, engaging you from the other angle, more of uh, the public as a common person, but an interested party to see what kind of benefit that we can have and also the kind of information that you've given us. A few comments here that I want to raise to your attention. The first one, if we go into the book on page 33, we we'll look at the conceptual framework that you have. You do have the left and the right parts of that conceptual framework, and you find that up there you have the bridge health, where you have the monitoring and implementation. Don't you think that that part could have applied to the left part as well? That's one. And then uh, the other one, maybe if you could uh, just respond to that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> the, um, monitoring and implementation on the left part, we are talking of mitigation impacts of environmental expulsions. Yes, it's true that once the mitigations are made, for example, uh, structural interventions are made, they need to be monitored. I agree with you. But in this, what we, we intended to show is that there was a section of health of the bridge in terms of internal factors that affect the bridge and then the external factors that affect the bridge. And once the internal and external are combined, <coughs> once they are addressed, we have a very good, and then information, uh, uh, information we have a, 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 more, a good model of a bridge management system which is suitable for Uganda. Then we shall have durable of the bridges. Thank you. Um, then on page 41, under table 7, you'll find that under column 3, where you have description, uh, if you go to row number maybe and uh, going down, about four, uh, three of those, one has got something that is incomplete and others there's something mis uh, missing. Maybe you could uh, look at that yes. and uh, give Thank us you. a Thank description. You. Thank you. Then, um, going further, you have uh, on page 48, you'll find that uh, you had some six respondents who are consultants who we engaged yes. in uh, giving you their views about environmental well, effect on uh, the bridges. Interestingly enough, five of them said that the impact of the atmosphere is minimal and can be tamed through regular maintenance. And they also say that uh, they further indicate that as long as the bridges are constructed, well, follow the standard designs and regularly maintained, weather has no effect on the state of concrete bridges. Now, based on that statement, you also had one other respondent who said that uh, was giving a different view, slightly different, uh, following that statement, that weather contributes considerably to the carbonation resulting into rust and subsequent weakening of the bridges and blah, blah, blah. However, it's interesting that the flooding, which is something that you raised as something crucial, was not hinted upon around here. What is your view about these consultants? Or maybe what was the context that led to the ignorance or ignoring that aspect of flooding? Yes, thank you very much. Um, this was uh, by my research assistant who moved around, actually, Respondent rate was quite low. 
it's characteristic to uh, think the uh, engineers. But uh, <coughs> it is really a general problem that uh, we don't respond to questions, um, so to, to questionnaires. Uh, these are ideas from these, these, these people. And most of these people, uh, maybe they have not read enough literature, and, uh, as I have, heard, uh, have read. The one who <laughs> so at my level, definitely, this, most of these people are not at my level. But definitely they know that probably flood influences, affects, uh, influences the corrupts of bridges, and maybe it skipped them. But I would concur very well with that one who said that uh, weather conditions affect uh, bridges, definitely, all over literature. It is very well known that once we have increased in temperatures, once we have increased rains, once we have all these things, carbon dioxide concentrations, all these things affect bridges. Thank you so much. Now, going on page 60, we do have that uh, figure 18. And we do have boxes there. However, to me at least, the relationship between these boxes is not established. Look, could, that, could you have uh, at least to use some lines to indicate that relationship? Or is it clear enough in your view? I do that. Okay, thank you. Then uh, you talked about in paper two, the vegetation growth, which was uh, noted to be uh, contributing to around 50 percent yes. and I was wondering why is it that this growth which is something that one would have expected that it's easy to deal with is so much ignored by the maintenance unit um, even in our circles even in our homes maintenance becomes a problem so it goes that um, even in the roads, sectors, maintenance is really a problem. And uh, I would attribute it to probably they are quite uh, overstretched. And uh, probably the contractors who are hired, maybe they are not paid in time. As, uh, most of us know the situation in Uganda, most of these things are not done in time. But incidentally, some bridges, they have persisted. And for the last five years, I've seen this situation, the station overgrowth on bridges, on western bridges, like uh, uh, bridges around in Tongamo, what is called Omunjenyi and Katinatinde. That one has been persisting, okay. despite even the rehabilitation of the road. In the interest of time, I'm going to raise some three other issues briefly. The first one is uh, how far has uh, Europe gone in using at least the non-structural mitigation measures to avert the negative impact of floods on bridges, and how successful has it been? And related to that, does UNRWA has a flood uh, flood plan? and flood, money, uh, flood um, mapping plan. Do they have that? Yes, uh, no. They don't have a risk uh, uh, map. Or, or, no, no, they have a, uh, a plan. So, the, the first one of uh, sensitizing people of, of non-structural interventions I think in a, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, they have done maybe 2. Because they have left this part to maybe disaster uh, management uh, uh, office of prime minister. And specifically to bridges, they have not really done anything much. Okay, uh, then lastly, in your paper, you are advocating for regular investigations, regular maintenance, and I also note that in the first paper, there was more specific classification of the maintenance, where you have the basic, you have the um, periodic, and general. 
which I talked of years. How I wish you had also expounded more on your regular maintenance that you are advocating, because it would then also um, give more guidance to what they are doing. But lastly, as a question, thank you, thank you. how much do environmental conditions contribute to highway bridge failures in Uganda? As I told you that highway failures, the factors synergistically work together. So, an old bridge of an old bridge of 50 years meeting with a, a flood which is a very strong flood, you are sure that it's going to collapse. But probably a younger bridge would resist. But it can also collapse depending on the force of the Lord. Uh, the Lord. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for that engagement. Uh, last today, we have uh, Dr. Moses Matovu, uh, who, as I said at uh, the beginning, is a lecturer in the Department of Civil Engineering, but he's one of the structures experts that we have in the department. So, Dr. Matovu. Welcome. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Hilary, how is the afternoon so far? Uh, quite good. Yeah. Um, just I'll start with the title Vulnerability of Concrete Bridges to Environmental Conditions in Uganda. That's one to tap into your mind. Did you think that the Ugandan environment had any peculiarities that, I mean, why not an investigation of vulnerability of concrete bridges? Anything specific that you had in mind besides um, the rainfall, intensity of rainfall? Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had in mind things like uh, overload. I had in mind like, uh, things like uh, increasing the volume of traffic, especially heavy loads. Okay. I had in mind things like uh, internal factors within the bridge. Okay, wonderful. Things like corrosion. Very good. Now, if I proceed to your background, you allude to quite a number of factors that cause bridge failures. Eh? And then I look at your instrument and um, Mm, I'm rather troubled by your omission of aspects like overload, which you have clearly identified as being a major cause, and then you dive into chloride ingress and uh, carbonation issues. Why is that? Do you think that your respondents were more familiar with that angle? Yes, we did some work on trying to get a information on axolot gross weight of heavy vehicles but I found that I not go far unless I do I have uh, if I am to determine the failures unless I have information on the technical information from the, uh, the, the bridge agencies on whether on, on the strengths which these bridges were intended for the design strength. Okay, Grant, so let, let me recast the same question yes. eh, because I, I want this just in a nutshell. Eh? Um, since I don't see any form of analysis, uh, I tend to think that you found the issues surrounding the failure of bridges as reported by the respondents. Eh? That was part of it, but also this was the, my findings. I had to move. 2011, we had to move with my supervisor and really see the causes of some of these bridges. So, I had to... Uh, so, just to clarify, yes. uh, are you saying that if it was reported by the respondent that that issue is the cause of failure, uh, was there any attempt at uh, qualifying their statements or you took it as the gospel truth? No, I didn't. I had to find out. Because, for example, I was informed that ah, due to the country being salty, that they are supposed to be some kind of chloride influence along those bridges. That was not true. So I didn't get, take it the most 
gospel truth, I have to investigate and see the real causes. Uh -huh. That's interesting. I'll follow up on that later. Uh, you talk about in your first paper, uh, basically about the status of grid management in Uganda. Eh? Um, and you talked about, from your concept of framework, I think you attempted to compare it with Sweden. Just out of curiosity, since you started the one in Sweden, Tanzania, South Africa, were there any differences? Besides, because I seem to have seen a report of those different systems. I want to engage your mind as to whether there are any differences, and as you what you recommend the Ugandan bridge management system should look like. More like South Africa, Sweden, USA, I don't know. Yes. I compared, I visited, at least in Sweden, at least in I visited the Swedish road agency. Um, this was mainly on the bridge management systems. But how it should look like? There is a, a, a mark of chain model which is usually does not consider the past. It considers the present and project for the future. And that would be the best version. Given that we have information, we can start getting information because historical information was rare, was not actually available. Didn't get it. So I recommend mark of chain, which actually is used in most of these bridge management systems, like the Swedish, the Batman, Bridge tunnel management system. That is okay. Yeah, uh, I would want you to clarify on whether there are any differences between Batman and, for instance, the Tanzanian system. No, I do not go deep into that. Uh, uh, because having reported on the systems, I would have yeah. wished you might want to consider this later that you give an analysis from those findings. Eh? and that's, recommend that's, the best way forward for Uganda. Okay. That's uh, let me get to the next. There is a question that keeps coming up about the validation of these results. I'm just curious. Is there any other alternative way you could have validated your findings besides making use of a priority uh, of an expert? Are there any other methods from literature, from theory? I don't know. Well, because of the 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 the, the 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 topic is not well studied, not well published, it was not easy to get information on some of these features. You cannot get information on uh, uh, Kenya and the bridge unless you get it from me. It's very difficult. Unless the only information is the point, which shows you the geo reference of that, that is the bridge is located in this area, and probably the span length. So that was the best I could do, given the information. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, I will get to the issue of conditional assessments. Uh, your investigations <laughs> revealed a very high percentage of delamination. Eh? From your point of view, what do you think are the causes of delamination? Is it possible? L l let me make it very simple. Is it possible that corrosion leads to delamination? And therefore it's... Very much so. Corrosion leads to delamination. But corrosion, they having been a rare in our bridges, it could have been workmanship. Okay, there are visible signs of corrosion, and it's possible, depending on the extent to which corrosion has taken place, that it's not visible to the naked eye. Could the delamination have been an indicator of corrosion taking place within the concrete deck? It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. I'm not denying that. But um, it's possible also that it could have been the, Maybe. the workmanship on 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 uh, on decks, repair, and other things. Yeah, we are talking about bridges that have been in existence for 50 years. Yes. So I thought we had already set up the aspect of workmanship then. Eh? So I, th I think no, the, the, the delamination, when, when bridges are repaired, 
during the, the, the day you took uh, the, 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 the way they do it. Yes, but in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, 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 the strength of the bridges itself, they had stayed for all that time with aggressive environment they be at first very very strongly. Yeah, it's good you thought about it. Um, okay, uh, I, I'll get to the next one. Um, from your studies, you observed that carbonation was practically like zero, and then you had very low levels of chloride. Right? Why, did, why did you even take an interest in the chlorides, for instance? I wanted to prove corrosion takes place because chloride and carbonation are very, very influential to corrosion. So now that the chloride levels are extremely low and there's no carbonation, that's what explains the fact that there's no corrosion at all, eh? No, is that, is that because water can also corrode, just water per se. Exposure to the atmosphere of, of, of uh, steel gutters, we could see, could, root, could also lead some corrosion. So it's not that, but corrosion which is induced by carbonation and chloride was really very uh, Okay, just for clarification, uh, you should not state that there was no carbonation at all, eh? Yeah, no, it was, we can't it, was, it was in some areas, and of course, we did not investigate the whole bridge. Uh-huh. Yes. Which leads me to so, the so, so we went to very, very core, core, core elements. Okay. And, Thank you. And we first tried to investigate on issues of denomination and see. For example, would fall a crack, for example. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Uh, thank you. Uh, the bridge, even this very core element, is quite big. What informed your choice of the exact location that you carried out your test? The core, uh, okay, that's very good. First of all, information was on flood level. We had three rows of test points in most of the bridges because minimum was three. The first, for example, on a, 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 an abutment, we have the upper, the middle, and the road. So we wanted to prove that actually there is some variation maybe in these uh, strength levels. So we are talking about the Schmidt readings, rebound hammer readings? Yes. Uh-huh. What does the rebound hammer measure? It measures the strength of the concrete cover. Uh, you but have that information. Yes, yes. So I need the specific property it does measure. Hardness. It is the hardness of uh -huh. <laughs> not strength, eh? Yes, yes. Uh, very good. So but it's converted to compressive. Uh, very good. Now looking at my hardness mm. as mm. my mm. independent variable and trying to get mm. to the strength as the dependent variable, mm -hmm. there are a number of other factors that would affect that. Eh? Okay, what are they? I beg your pardon? Before we make the conclusion. Mm. Uh, that the hardness readings were reflecting the values of strength, we must also be mindful about other variables that could affect that conversion. Eh? So that's why I'm wondering, before yeah, we um, believe your strength values... One is uh, the irregularity of the surface. The denomination also affects the, the, the results. So if a surface is eliminated, definitely you are going to get a very low strength. You are going to get low strength. You are going to, re to get a low uh, hardness of the cup. So to, 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 um, to minimize errors due to those incidences, Due to those uh, like irregularities of the surface, we used um, the abrasive stone to make that the to make sure that the surface is clean enough. And also, even the user 
of of the of the hammer himself. You have to make about 10 to 12 readings, which are not varying from the, not on the same point, but around the same point, not varying by the probably five millimeters. Should I? Uh, okay. Uh, I was alluding to factors like, for instance, surface moisture, moisture, uh, like the type of finish, like the type of aggregate, uh, because before you make the kind of conversion from your rebound hammer readings. Eh, you must have used the calibration chart from... Yes, we use the calibration chart for all the bridges. Is there a an assumption inherent in that kind of direct usage of that calibration? Um, pass. I might rephrase that. That what is the ideal? If you could carry out destructive tests, what would be the ideal? Of course the ideal would be you are going to 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 destructive tests like quarry? Yeah, like quarry, if you could. Mm -hmm. Now in that case, I would now not measure the surface strength. It would help me to go deeper into the bridge and definitely would go to better results. So if there was a way of using destructive means and I combine it with the non-destructive, the same destructive method it would give better results. So that would and be a need, I'm saying that we had weak conclusions. Some of those are the factors. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, it's the... I, I wish you could identify some of these concerns before you make, you know, your conclusions, eh? Uh, as you proceed. Okay, and... Uh, uh, unfortunately, you can't recast some of the slides. I was looking at some of your slides, like slide 18, where you make certain conclusions, and I was wondering how you were able to move from the information you had gathered to make those very conclusions, but apparently... I don't know how to take it up from there. Do you have access to uh, your slide, slide number 18? Yeah, just in the meantime, a light one. Uh, when you carried out your penopalin tests eh, yes. and you dug through the concrete deck, uh, did I get you right? You said for ethical considerations. That's yes. why you yes. have to restore. Yes. Only for ethical, no structure reasons as to why. Of course, the structural reasons are we are going to expose the river to environment. To moisture and the oxygen, and that would be actually a recipe for us. Uh -huh. Okay, in your document, uh, when you are trying to identify the causes of um, some of these issues in bridges, uh, you allude to, for instance, flexure cracking. Somewhere you mentioned there are cracks due to seismicity. Was this still the broad literature, or you went ahead to identify these? We didn't I did that was literature. But uh, the, the most of the, the cracks we saw, we also categorized them according to most of them were either fracture or on cracks. But there is literature which details the issues of, of uh, so that was not your categorization. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So along the way I also had things like non structure and architecture cracking. Was that your categorization? Architecture cracking? Uh, non structure. Non structure cracking? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think I have it. Ah. Oh, so okay. It, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. No, I got it. Was, I, I, something to do with interventions. No. Yes. We realized why it was non structure because we followed some of the cracks and they, when they were actually not were superficial. They were not non Manufacture. Just so, curious. Yes, it was a how do I tell that it's superficial? Yes, merely the size. No, the, the 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 size and the depth. How did you measure the depth of the cracks? We when we actually um, uh, determining areas where we would, uh, test for carbonation, 
we will dig further to see the depths of the ground. You had 22 bridges, yes, but you carried out non-destructive testing on 18 bridges, eh? Yes, yes, I think so. I'm just curious, uh, yeah. why did you drop the other four? They were inaccessible, we are talking about non-destructive testing. No, it's the question of time. It was a question of time. It was a question of time and the, the semantics in terms of uh, organizing labor and other things. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. I think you deserve a clap. Okay. Next, uh, we are going to open up uh, the defense to the public so that uh, members can make comments, we can ask questions, after which we shall have uh, a closed session where the examiners will go somewhere and the deliberate of your work. Uh, I have been uh, requested humbly by Professor Mwakali to make very brief remarks before the public and perhaps uh, I'm sure you have taken a, a couple of months if not years without meeting your colleagues in Sweden before uh, Lennart goes off perhaps you would like to say hi so I give you two minutes. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Dean, uh, Professor Dampade. Uh, Leonard, are you, are you able to see me? I thought I should uh, greet you um, after a number of years without uh, meeting with you. I would have loved to, to shake hands with you. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to do it in, 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 virtual, in virtual reality. <laughs> um, but um, I hope Sweden is okay. I'm not going to comment on the presentations, either of the student viewers or the, or, or the, or the, or, or the, the, the panelists. Um, that's, that's, it's not, <laughs> I think it's not allowed, <laughs> unless I'm allowed to do so. But I just wanted to greet you and, um, and thank you for for taking the time to examine our uh, our student and uh, for enduring in, in, enduring um, on Skype for well over three uh, three hours that is uh, that's great I I I want to read from uh, if you if if you don't mind read uh, an email you sent uh, to our chair here um, it it touched me. You had wanted to come here in person, and then um, later you wrote as follows. However, after careful considerations, I have decided not to make the long and environmentally harmful trip to Kampala. <laughs> Transportation contributes to harmful emissions, and I have for a long time been engaged in research for a more sustainable society, trying to optimize the use of our existing bridges. That was uh, brilliant. Uh, we, we, like, we like that level of honesty. You believe in the environment. And um, it's good uh, Hillary uh, decided to research on environmental effects uh, on bridges. So thank you very much for that level of honesty. We really appreciate it. It touched me. <laughs> you believe in what, in, in what you're researching, in what you say, uh, which, is, uh, which, is, uh, which is quite rare. In, in, our, in our societies. But uh, my regards to your family and also Sven. I wonder whether he's been listening, but uh, please uh, 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 convey our regards to him and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much for these kind words. Okay. Um, now, the, the public, you have uh, liberty to ask questions. Okay, Professor Henry and Naipe. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Professor JP has said, uh, since we're academicians, we have to ask questions. But uh, also just mention that I was on the doctor committee for nearly some time back. But uh, 
I still have to ask. Um, you've looked at this, you've done the SWOT analysis for UNRWA. My, my feeling was that it was a general SWOT analysis, not directed towards this problem. Uh, but the, also, there are some obvious things that you've uh, possibly left out. Because recently, UNRWA was restructured. You've said that uh, there are hard-working people there as, as a strength, but you also know that uh, during the tenure of your project, uh, UNRWA was overhauled. They were very dishonest people. We had to see and other issues. So I, I think we would also have mentioned it in a way to balance out. That's, that's what I noted. Uh, then <clears throat> you've also said that um, the, the strength of the concrete in the pairs was varying a lot. And the strength uh, within the decks was more or less uh, uniform at around 40 to 50. But uh, I also wanted to know whether you compared that strength with what was actually designed and put into the structure. Because it could have varied even at the time of construction. They could have used great uh, C20 or C25, but of course using bigger, uh, bigger sections. So uh, the variation is, is, could be there because of the environmental effect, but uh, there, there could also be variation, a lot of variation right from the design, uh, how the structures were designed. I also want to, I want to question you on the word, on the use of the word damage versus damages. Uh, yeah, damages usually is, damages is for the, the, the cost of, you know, cases. Uh, that's how it's normally used. But when you say damage, damage should be uh, also in a, like, just use the flat like that. It's not true. Damage is for, for the costs. You've also said somewhere that, I think for one of the recommendations, that you wanted to investigate the maximum road bearing capacity of the bridges. Uh, and I was wondering how you're going to do it. Whether you're going to do proof loading, are you going to load the bridges in order to determine the maximum road bearing capacities? Are you going again to uh, investigate? Because you should be having the drawings and the designs. So you can, you can assess from that and say what's now the capacity. But you can also do proof loading. So I was wondering how you're going to do this. Uh, you know, and considering also the factors they, they have talked about, that the bridges may be deteriorating. They may be deteriorating. You've also said that uh, uh, shrinkage cracks, uh, that there was non-structural cracks. And you, said, you specifically talked about shrinkage. And, and my view is that, and from the literature, some of the shrinkage cracks can also be structural, you know? I mean, there are cases of our dams here in Kaluma and Simba and so on. Uh, partly it's because of the shrinkage of the concrete. And they are structural, they are, because as long as they affect the strength of the elements, then they are structural. They are not just surface cracks. My other comment is that, uh, maybe similar to what uh, Dr. Taylor uh, was saying, I still miss a bit of the bridge, the bridge management the system uh, input. Because if I want to move from here to the you know, system itself, what, what are the key things that we must look for and incorporate in our system? So I, I feel it's, uh, it should also be included. Um, then uh, when you're giving your background, you said that most bridges were constructed in the 1950s and 1960s. Yes, I feel the, 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 the long span ones. Uh, if you're talking about Pakwach, if you're talking about a water bridge, if you're talking about uh, the, the, the long span ones, the, the Nile Bridge, of course. But there have been also many other bridges of construction over the years. And what you could say that you are looking at the, uh, the bridges of more than 300 bridges. Possibly many of them were constructed after that. You know? So I think you could have qualified it to say uh, the long span ones were constructed in the 50s and 60s, but the new ones uh, uh, you know, were of, of, of shorter spans. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, I think uh, it is we have large comments. But perhaps you might say one or two. There's just one thing. We have talked to the technical uh, data sets. We have a limitation, actually. 
you could not get uh, the drawings or the, even the intended the design swings, the design issue, issues of design you couldn't get, whether it means what, whether it means what. That was a very big hindrance. And then we had to change uh, the, the, the original such which we have. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the public? Yes, uh, Dr. Gilbert Kasandaki is uh, from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Thank you very much, Chairman. And Gilbert, thank you very much for the presentation. I had uh, some concerns, some of them have been ably addressed by my colleagues already. But to start, vulnerability of the concrete environmental factors. What is the environment we are talking about? Eh? I, I have followed it together. Oh, sorry. I have tried to follow your pre presentation to get the clear view of what the environment we are afraid of is actually. Because if you say rain, rain water can be acidic, eh? and the structure itself does not display acidic eh? conditions. If we don't capture the other element, then we are missing very important information. I would have loved you to define what the environment is in those bridges. Are the rains acidic in nature? Are they alkaline? You know, if the soils are there and you are interested in them, what is there? you know, characteristics before you go into whether they are actually causing eh, something or not. I, I found that one missing. The other one was to do with variation. Uh, professor here has tried to hint on it, the Tamatovo tried to hint on it, and also the, the, the opponent picked interest in it, variation of the measured strengths, being dependent on the elements. The deck is showing least variations compared to the lower parts. I thought that was expected. Eh? And he, he also picked it that, yes, usually the, the lower you come for bridges, the, the criticality increases. Eh? But in looking at the method, because this is taking me to the method, eh? Dr. Moses did look at this very carefully. Steamed it hammer, or rebound hammer, as it is commonly called has very many, you know, loopholes in terms of the line and the results. And when you talk of that variability, the deck is probably almost all the time dry. As we go down, moisture starts to change. Then how do we look at these data sets as being the same? We need to approach it very carefully. We should see you eliminating certain things based upon the existing literature. The calibration uh, equation you are using has been manufactured or prepared uh, most likely from China. If you use the student hammer board from China or whatever, that is where the things were done and things are different right there and it was done in the laboratory for your information, not in the field. The other aspect uh, I will not repeat this, the issue of maximum load eh? it has been talked about. But uh, Professor Mkiri hinted on the issue of uh, what came from the respondents. Majority of them said indeed the environment wouldn't be a problem. And I want to believe them because these are design issues. Eh? The designer will always ask for these things. Eh? So they already designed for, and if the design is proper, indeed they will not have a major problem. I want to believe that. Eh? So the question he was asking was, what was the rationale? That one should come out clearly. Eh? And the, the last one, uh, expert opinion has come up so several times, I'm not repeat that, but the last one, in general con 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 conclusions, what you have been emphasizing has not come out properly. Causes of bridge deterioration. It did not come out. Instead, you say the age is not an issue. And I looked for what actually is an issue I did not see. I was expecting some ranking of some sort. Eh? That's why they are telling you, as younger people, how do they use your findings? 
what is it we have not been doing or overlooking? And here you are saying, yes, this is more important than this. If you go, I was expecting now that you have eliminated age, which I think in the beginning was a key, the factor you were thinking was going to come up. So what then next? I think I let me give us as time to take it from there. Thank you. Yes, Siran. Probably can start with the first, uh, the first comment. Um, yeah, um, edge, edge, edge was less of an issue than, for example, climate. But, you know, we have been having bridge collapses, but most of these have been actually steel bridges. Very few concrete bridges. And they even at that age of uh, the factor of about 40 to 50, we are still standing. It leaves us to think that probably they were made of good concrete. Mm -hmm. Probably the only problem they have, the major problem, because I have talked of the synergetic influence factors, is flat. Now, Another thing is uh, the, the topic which we talked about, the bit of concrete bridges. This is the uh, sustainability of uh, concrete bridges to external actions. So this is what we're trying to look at. And uh, we have able to explain that, that actually external actions, we were not looking much more of the internal actions. I think that is uh, probably what I can teach from uh, And the, 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 last, the, the next one, the, uh, you talked of, of um, you also hinted on uh, the, 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 the expectation that actually the strength should be moving, should be higher with the decks. Maybe not necessarily, because probably uh, we would expect uh, roads and the overflights probably influence some of those uh, issues. So we were trying to eliminate, we were trying to look to the, the uh, uh, referencing the, uh, some kind of best potential possibility of major cause. Let, let me just make a clarification so that you don't take it in the wrong direction. Yes. The idea is not the actual strength of the element, but the measured strength can be wrongly captured. Eh? That's the idea. Yes. That you will capture close to true strengths for that, but very, very, very off strengths for look. No, that is the, the idea behind this. Thank you. Thank you. Is that all? Yes. Okay. Any other contributions from the public? Yes, Professor Nape. No, feel free. This is academics. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, final comment is about uh, recommending or commending generally uh, uh, for the patients he has exhibited over the last uh, one and a half years or so. Because uh, this act should have taken place some time back, but because of the post the new process of Makiri, he had to wait and therefore I thank him for his patience. Yeah, I wish him well. Thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you very much, Henry, for that extraordinary concern. Yeah, I know you always like that. Henry is my moko. Very, very tell me. Your sister is like that. Any <laughs> <laughs> uh, other comments? Really? May, may I make a few more comments? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, Linux. Go ahead. Yes, I, I think it's one, one thing that, that is important here with bridge management system is their robustness and, and durability. And we have some problems here in Sweden with, with that. And that. That is, for example, that the, the drawings and the calculations that were made for bridges 50 years ago, they, they were stored away in some archive. And then they moved around and they lost the archives. So we can't find these things. And I think a, a, a good thing of the bridge management system is that these kind of basic data are preserved. And I think uh, it's not the way that it's very 
uh, very, very, very good and intricate, but, but it, that it's durable, that, that, and, and that, that you keep some uh, spotlight on it, that there is there, and that you keep it. I think that, 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 that's very important. And I think uh, that, that is due for all bridge maintenance systems. You can make them very nice in computers, and you can make statistics and so on, but, but the main thing is that you have the, the, the basic data there, and you can compare what, what what you have over the time, and you can see how it's changing. And I think that, that uh, Hitler has put some focus on the, the, the system, that, that, that you need to have it. And, and, and I think that, that that's important. That then regarding the Schmidt hammers, uh, I've been working with them for some long time, and I knew that there is a big variability into them, and there are different factors. But, but they, they give kind of an overall measure of the concrete quality, and that, that, that's quite good. So it's an easy and robust method, and, and I, I think it's, it, it's useful. Uh, well, I, I stop there. Okay, thank you very much, Leonard, for that uh, intervention. Uh, any other comments? Leonard? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure whether you were happy with the the comment that, uh, or the response that Hillary made to your last question, you asked him whether, if at this point in time, he was to undertake this study, he would do it similarly or in a different way. I'm not sure that you were convinced, but the person that he wasn't. I would like to give him a chance again and uh, recast whether he still stands by, by what he said. Are you sure, after all this uh, time of doing research, going through the nitty gritties and so on, if you are given a chance to do this work today, would you do it the same way like you have done? Thank you very much. Yes, I would, if I am under the same circumstances as I were in the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of agree. I mean, to do a literature study, to, to start with, to see what's going on in other countries that was pointed out by the, by the other experts, to, to compare what's done in South Africa and in the United States and the UN. I think that, that's good. You, you must start with that. But then doing some interviews to talk with the people who are working with this is also very good to get their views on it. And then to do a field study where you go out yourself and look at the bridge yes, and check them and do some tests on them. And, and then you use this simple Schmidt number to get to know what is the concrete variability and you found that there is a variability, but it's not very big and it's much less than you would expect it. That, that, that kind of strengthens your idea what, what is the condition of the bridges. And then when you see the abutments and what's happening with the, the changing climate that we have, we have the, the, the rain is more heavy when it comes. So, so the, the, the rivers, they, they, they swell. And that can be problems to the abutments. And you have to take care of that. And, and, and I think that's one of the main problems for the future, to see that the rivers are not going to rise too much. I mean, the, the, the problems they have had in uh, Florida with, with, with these uh, hurricanes there, it's that the water is coming in too big amounts and, and you must have drainage for it. And you must look, look at that. And that, that is the environmental problem. The, the structural problems are there, but, but the, the structures are to, to keep away for, 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 for what the environment gives us. And the environment is not as stable as it has been before. So, so, so I think, uh, well, then this is what uh, Hillary has done. And he has shown on the importance on, on looking on these questions. And also for the importance to have a bridge maintenance system that you don't, that, that, that you really pay some, pay some importance, give some importance to it. And, and to, to show for the public, for the politicians, that, that this is an important area. If you want to have a transportation system that is robust, 
then you must keep track of the bridges and you must have the right kind of people. And, and what also Hillary said, but what has been emphasized here is the education of the general public and the general, the, also the education of the people that are taking care of the bridges, the, these uh, wave stations. If you raise their general uh, knowledge of what's happening, that, then I think it's better for the bridges and I think it's better for the transportation system and I think it's better for the country. So, so in general, I think the procedure that, that Hitler has taken, I should do it in that way. Then, of course, if I should continue, that there is so much happening with computers and digital things. We should, of course, use that. But, but that's something that is uh, cream on the milk. I mean, the, the basis is that keep track of what you have and see what's happening there and keep them in good shape. And, and, and you have to stick to it. It's nothing that, that you can leave to someone else. You must keep a focus on that. Okay, Renat, thank you very much uh, for that clarification. Now the next stage is uh, involving uh, the panelists going to some closed discussion from some room outside here. So I request the public to be patient. You, you should give here the company and uh, some comforting words as you, you wait for a verdict from the panel. So members of the panel, we shall move to the room outside on the right to discuss uh, the work based on uh, what we have heard from the student, what you read from the drafts that were given to you. And then we see the supervisor who is present is free to come. But of course, uh, you are not uh, supposed to be involved in taking a decision. You can only make clarifications as and when it is necessary. I'm not sure whether Leonard will still be online when we are announcing the verdict. Uh, what time do you think it will take before you make the announcement? Hmm? Normally it takes between 10 to 20 minutes. Well, then I prepare to stay online if it's possible, for I would be very interested in learning the, the results of this uh, learning, learning discussion. <laughs> we shall also appreciate if you can be patient a bit. Okay, so 20 minutes from now, maximum, we shall be making a pronouncement. Okay? So thank you, members of the public. Panelists, we can go for closed discussion. Thank you. Members of the public, uh, Professor Leonard, over the other side. Uh, Hilary, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the panelists have gone through the, the, uh, your work based uh, on uh, the thesis copies that were given to them and your presentation and the, the engagement between you and the opponent, the responses that you made in their questions and comments, plus of course the questions and comments that were raised by the public. Uh, the general feeling, in summary, is that uh, you as a, the candidate had a good grasp of the subject area that you were working on. Okay. Uh, the main observations, what you presented is a, a compilation of papers with a, a summary at a, the beginning. Uh, they looked at the presentations, how you presented your work, and the feeling was that the presentation was good. They developed, they developed a, a scale of excellent, very good, good, fair, and the poor. And based on that scale, the presentation, presentation was good. Then they looked at uh, the quality of your thesis. They made a thorough analysis of the thesis in general. And using the same scale, the feeling was that the thesis is good. 
they also looked at uh, how you were responding to the questions. You were calm, patient, uh, clear, honest, candid, and based on those parameters, the feeling, the feeling was uh, that uh, the score is good. And after making all that, uh, those assessments, uh, they identified some specific areas that need improvement in your work. And these were as follows. One, there is need for concrete recommendations to clearly come out so as to influence policy. For example, you know, be interested in the using your results in improving the way uh, they manage the maintenance of bridges. So concrete recommendations to influence, influence policy is key as an area of improvement. They also observed that there is need to conform to the guidelines of reporting as stipulated in the handbook from the Directorate of Research and Graduate Training. As an example, if you look at your cover page, it does not conform to what a graduate school would require. Tables, um, list of tables, figures, and such things. So generally, the recommendation is that uh, you improve your report so that it conforms to those requirements. Three, in the background, there was a concern that uh, you did not clearly highlight the environmental issues that impact on the durability of bridges. It can be half a page or one page, whereby you should clearly highlight these and you qualify how, for example, you zero down to one specific aspect of the environment. You remember some of the examiners and members in the public brought this out. Four, there are some general editorial corrections that need to be done to improve your thesis. So these four areas we are identified as areas where you need to improve your thesis. Now, in general, the verdict of the panel was that you pass. However, you need to make some minor corrections. Because you have corrections from uh, the external examiner, the internal examiner, the secretariat has been uh, recording the concerns raised during the session. All of these are areas that uh, point towards need for minor corrections. And uh, the feeling was that if this can be done to the satisfaction of one of the members of the panel, who will be given to you and the, your supervisors, this will be good enough. And the, we are giving you up to three months to do this. But you should do, be cognizant of the fact that by the end of October, the graduation list should be submitted. So if you take one week, it will do within three months. If you do not want to graduate in January, you can take up to three months. It is up to you. But uh, I congratulate you upon uh, hitting that milestone. Perhaps you deserve a handshake from me as the chairperson. <laughs> so, Lenet, Lenet, we hear by pronouns Hilary Bakamwesiga from today as Dr. Hilary Bakamwesiga. Wow. Wow. So, I would like first of all to thank the supervisors. Uh, Sven Tal Anderson and Professor Jackson Mwakali for the good work that they have done all through to see here that through up to this point. I would like to thank the college for giving uh, Hillary uh, support in terms of uh, space and securing the scholarship for him to do this work. Thank you very much. The administration of the college, you have done a very good job at all levels, from the college level, school level, departmental level. All this uh, has, been, uh, has been seen through this level 
because of your efforts. The examiners, you have done a great job. Reading this work is not easy. I mean, it's the busy schedules that you have. The public, you have done a great job coming to listen to what uh, our candidate has been presenting. Leonard, uh, I've heard the comments that Professor Mwakali made. The environment is not... In, in fact, the problem we have in Africa is that some of us think that flying is actually a luxury. It is very common here for people to say that I'm going to Sweden, I'm going to USA, and people would feel like you are high class uh, when actually you are suffering. Okay, uh, but we thank you nevertheless for the effort. You reviewed the work as the external examiner. You have been an opponent and done a very good job. You have persevered through the four hours from the beginning of this session up to now. We are happy for that. And rest assured that in the future we shall need your services because more candidates are coming up. Learn it. Okay. This event is not uh, online. Kindly pass our regards to him and thanks and appreciation for the work he has done to see Hillary through up to this point. The College of Business and Management Sciences have done a great job in organizing the facility of uh, Skype to make sure that uh, Leonard does not suffer the jet lag of coming all the way to Uganda. We thank the college for the facilities here. We thank the IT expert, my brother over there, who has moved me up and down throughout the session to make sure that Leonard remains online. Leonard, are you still online? Yes, I'm still in line. Thank you very much for your kind words, and I'm very happy to have been able to take part in this, and I do hope by that I will have a possibility in the future to visit Uganda and see your great country. Oh, very much. Very much welcome. You should. Finally, Josephine Namubiru, that gallant lady, the secretariat of the school, you have done a great job. You have go gone through all the ups and downs to make sure that this event happens. Thank you very much. So at this point, I would like to declare this session closed. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lenet. Session closed. Lunch, just in the building close to this one.